Checking out Debate Talk for You Radio. When I want to hear the hottest debates in the country, I stay tuned. Shout out to Sal doing his thing. Keep doing the great work, man, and I'm going to keep tuning in. Yeah, buddy. This your boy, LeBron Campbell, a.k.a. Bust the Bible Like a Rifle. I just want to give a shout out to my man, Sal Showtime. Keep doing your thing on Debate Talk for You, where everybody want to hear the best debates around the globe. Peace and assalamu alaikum. This is Raheem Ali, your expert investigative reporter. Checking out the Lions Den debate talk for you with your great host, Sal Showtime. Oh. 
Talk. You don't want to miss the best show via the internet, Debate Talk for You Radio. We have the best debates in the world. We have the best special guests to present the information to the masses out there. So make sure you tune in every Thursday and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time by going to www.blogtalkradio.com slash Debate Talk for You. The number is 646-716-7320. If you want to tune in via phone or via Skype, once again, that number is 646-716-7320. Save it to your cell phone. Let people know that the big talk for you is official. Check us out. Greetings from the I Love Being Black movement. We have the largest black Facebook page with over 6 million fans worldwide. And we're offering advertising options at affordable rates. If you want to increase your reach with loads of new fans, then this is absolutely the best way. We also offer seminars, consultations and strategic planning services by Kumi Rose, a.k.a. The Social Strategist. Why not contact us today at ilovebeingblack.com or call us at 310-807-5775. Cheers. Shalom Aleichem Israel. This your brother Zadok Ben Israel. Assistant teacher at the Congregation of Israel, the Knesset of Jesus, located in Buffalo, New York. We believe in the full, uncut word of God from Genesis to Revelation, and we seek to share the truth that the Holy Spirit has witnessed to us. So if you are interested in finding out more about our ministry, please visit us at www.congregationisrael.net. You can also find our teachings on YouTube under my namesake, youtube.com slash the Doc Ben Israel. Uh, we also have a page, Knesset Yeshua, K-N-E-S-S-E-T. Y-S-H-U-A. You can also find us on Blog Talk Radio every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, on the Growing Stone Bible Study Show. Go to blogtalkradio.com slash Nazarene. And if you feel you just want to reach out and talk to us personally, call us, 866-78-BIBLE. Shalom, and we look forward to hearing from you. Hi, this is Tyrone Thompson, host of the Blog Talk Radio broadcast, Talk Real Solutions. Please tune in and listen to all of our shows seven nights a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At Talk Real Solutions, we cover a variety of topics to ensure we speak about what may be needed in our community at any time. Talk Real Solutions is the hottest Blog Talk Radio show going on right now. You can listen to our broadcast at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash talk real solutions or visit our website at www.talkrealsolutions.com. Also like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash talk real solutions. You can call in at any time during the show and add to the conversation and offer your solutions at 1-858-357-8453. That's 1-858-357-8453. Because at Talk Real Solutions, we want to make sure you have a chance to talk real solutions. Hi, this is Sister Omnunet, and I currently am promoting my website, which can be found on HalimaBeal.com. That's www.HalimaBeal.com, spelled H-A-L-I-Y-M-A-B-E-A-L.com. And we are promoting our candles, we're promoting counseling services, and we are promoting positive blogs for your spirit, soul, mind, to rejuvenate you and to inspire your life. 
please feel free to reach out and hit us up on www.halimabeal.com. This is Sister Amunette signing off. Peace and blessings. Never allow the possibility of your heart desire to trouble your mind, whether it is success or happiness, because your mind is a powerful machine that is very capable of manifesting anything that it conceives and believes in. Become more enlightened about life and the subconscious mind by visiting courtsforthemind.com. You are only as strong as the thoughts that constantly dwell in your mind. Therefore, never allow any negative belief about your abilities in life to be granted shelter in your mind. Edmund Mbiaka, Boots for the Mind dot com. Hello everybody out there listening in. This is Brother LeBar, co teacher of Absolute Bible Truth Ministry. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge and give reverence and credence to the Father of all creation, the Holy One of Israel. Peace and blessings in the name of our Lord and King. Messiah Jesus Christ. I want to take this great opportunity to invite you guys to the Absolute Bible Truth broadcast on Blog Talk Radio. If you love to hear the word or have any questions concerning the word, call in and dial 646-716-8249. That's 646-716-8249. We are live on the air every Saturday, the Most High's Weekly Sabbath, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to listen in via internet, type in www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Absolute Bible Truth. We also have a Facebook page. Just type in Absolute Bible Truth, all one word, in the search engine. At ABT, we teach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth concerning the Word of God while leaving out all personal opinions, speculations, and beliefs. Our ministry believes emphatically that the Bible is indeed the absolute truth, and we pride ourselves in bringing forth the Word in a clear, intelligent fashion so that the body of Christ will be edified in abundance. I love you guys, pray our strength in Christ, and we will do the same for you. Shalom. You are now inside the lion's den. Welcome to the B2Fee Radio. This is Renald Francois representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out Debate Talk for You Radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 5 of Debate Talk Free Radio. This is the Season 5 finale debate on Debate Talk Free Radio. I want to welcome everybody to the Lions Den. That's right, guys. You're officially inside the Lions Den where we have the best debates in the world via Internet. We have the best special guests to bring forth the information to the masses that tune in live on the big talk for you. I welcome everybody to the show. That's right, guys. Today is the final show for Season 5 of the Bait Talk for You. But you know, I can't let you guys go without a, setting up a classic debate for you guys to uh, check out the archives later on and even download from Blog Talk Radio. So fasten your seatbelts, get your pen and pads ready. We're going to get this thing started real soon. But, of course, you already know i got to go through a few, a few brief announcements. But today's show is entitled, Are the Original Arabs Africans? Are the Original Arabs Africans? That's right, this is going to be a Muslim versus Bible scholar debate, so we're going to get this thing started in a few minutes, and I see we got people who's calling in from Skype, and we have a lot more callers calling in via phone. I appreciate everybody that's tuning in to debate talk for you via phone and via Skype all across the globe. Of course, all the international listeners out there that's checking out the show, we have people listening in Germany, we have people listening in the UK, shout out to the UK listeners out there, and we even have, even have people waking up to debate talk for you early in the morning, so if you're out there actually waking up to the show, I appreciate you tuning in very early in the morning. Morning, guys. I know it's early to check this uh, knowledge out. And of course, everybody on social
social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That's checking it out, checking us out. Do me a favor. If you're inside a Facebook group and you're listening to the show, just share it on your personal page. I let people know that debate talk for you is live and on the air. I let them know this is the season finale, so make sure you tune in. The number is 646-716-7320. And this is the show where you listen and audience can call in with your questions and your comments. But you got to keep it clean, keep it professional. We like to hear from the people out there so you can get answers to your questions. It's all about the listen, the audience interacting with the special guests to bring forth the information out there. So keep a lock right here on Debate Talk Free Radio. Again, let me go through a few announcements before we get this thing started. As usual, send me an email at debate talk for you at gmail.com. That's debate talk to number four and letter U at gmail.com. Go to Facebook.com forward slash debate talk for you. That's Facebook.com forward slash debate talk for you. You can download the show via iTunes, go to the podcast section. And type in the search box, debate talk to number four, and the letter U, and you'll see the show pop up absolutely free. The great thing about the iTunes podcast is absolutely free. That's great about that. You can also check out season one all the way up to season five of Debate Talk with You, and never miss another episode. And the great thing about it, once the show goes off the air in about 10 or 15 minutes, it automatic, automatically uploads to your tablet, whatever you have, your iPod, your PC, whatever you have the iTunes podcast loaded up on. So, again, I highly recommend that you support the brand and go to the iTunes podcast. It's absolutely free. And uh, support Debate Talk for Radio. Go to Instagram.com slash Debate Talk for You. Got some videos up on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com slash Debate Talk for You. Of course, we're on Twitter at Showtime DT for You. That's Showtime. D is in David. T is in Tom. The number four. And the letter U. Keep in mind, I invite a variety of, a variety of special guests on the show. So, whatever information you hear, I highly recommend that you take notes and find the time to do your own independent research just to make sure the information is valid. We're free to call in. We must hold our elders, teachers, and scholars accountable for the information we have brought to you in all public venues. The sole purpose for this show is for you to listen to the audience to hear new information, take notes, call up for answers, and most of all, do your own independent research. Also, number one rule on this show is there's no foul language. No foul language. We have thousands of listeners that tune in all across the globe, some of which may tune in with their children or even the elderly. Help support the show by sending your donations. Go to www.paypal.com. Use the email donations at debatetalkforyou.com. That's donations with the S at the end at debatetalkforyou.com. Support the brand. Keep us on the air. And uh, once again, I want to thank all those people out there that's been uh, uh, sending in your donations and been supporting the brand. Uh, people out there that's actually spreading the word about Debate Talk Free Radio. Uh, no matter the amount, whether it be a dollar, five dollars, ten or more, remember, you are making it all happen. Sign up with Blog Talk Radio is absolutely free. It never miss another show. Once you sign up, type in the search box Debate Talk for You, and you will automatically be notified via email and smartphone of all upcoming shows. You want to hear from you listening to the audience, send in your audio shout outs. All you need is a voice recorder, which you can find on any smartphone, say your name, where you're from, and what you like about the show. As a matter of fact, we're going to be collecting audio shout-outs, even though we're going to be off the air. And we're going to come back, actually, for those who are unaware, we're going to come back on with Season 6 of Debate Talk for You on Friday, September 11th. That's right, guys. Friday, September 11th, we're going to be back. Actually, I'm already already setting up some debates uh, for Season 6. This is going to be an action-packed lineup. Uh, you know, it's going to be definitely the official. So, you know how we do on Debate Talk Free Radio. Again, we're going to come back on the air for Season 6 on uh, Friday, September 11th. Uh, so we're going to be collecting the shout-outs. And we want to play, you know, shout-outs and uh, we're to hear the support from the people out there. And when you're done uh, setting that up, send, send it to the email, debatetalkforyou at gmail.com, and I will play it live on the air for all to hear. For a very small fee, you can advertise your business, your live event, your website, etc. right here on Debate Talk Free Radio. Again, there's no one else out there that's going to allow you to advertise for the low cost that I will offer you guys. There's some people out there that's charging people $200, $300 just to advertise on their show. I mean, I'm nowhere near that. I'm definitely below $100, and uh, it's definitely affordable. And, again, we're going to be collecting a lot more commercials for next season of the Bait Talk Fuse. So if you want us to, you know, advertise your business, your live event, things of that nature, on the Bait Talk Fuse radio, again, send me an email, and we can discuss, the, you know, discuss everything, and I'll break it all down for you how to go how to go about everything. In order for the Bait Talk Fuse to expand, we need each and every listener to subscribe to the Facebook page, YouTube channel, and even official blog talk radio page. We love the fact that you listen to the information. However, we need your subscription. We need to show the world that we have a strong and loyal following. Help take this show to the next level and be a loyal follower of the Bay Talk Free Radio. Only you can keep us relevant. 
Again, guys, you know, this is the finale show of Debate Talk. Are you ready? I'm so excited. I see we have a lot of people on the switchboard. It's lit up right about now, and people checking us out all across the globe. We're going to get this thing started, guys. I'm going to jump right into this. Man, this, this is the finale debate of Debate Talk for You Radio for Season 5. Let me introduce my special guest. My first special guest uh, is no rookie when it comes to debating. He started off debating uh, via social media and even was discovered by TRS Carbon Radio CEO Elijah Garvey, a.k.a. Supreme. Now he is one of the champion debaters on TRS Carbon Radio when it comes to biblical topics. This brother is always seeking new challenges in the debate arena. This is Black Jesus Minister Blanche. Welcome to the show. What's happening, Sal, and to the DT for you audience, and also shout out to uh, TRS Carbon Radio, Tyrone Thompson, and Elijah Garvey, Supreme Poverty. Man, I'm glad to be here, dear brother. I thank you very much for this opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's always a pleasure to have you on the panel. Uh, do me a favor, for those who don't know who you are, of course, give them a brief introduction of uh, how, who you are, how long you've been studying, how long you've been teaching, things of that nature, your website information. Just let it all out there and, uh, you know, let the world know who you are. That. All righty. Uh, to, to all of you who are tuning in and listening in to this debate, I will be doing most of my points and, and uh, speaking uh, from notes that I have posted on my Facebook page, and I'm inviting the uh, the, the, wa- the wide audience to uh, feel free to contact me at any time on uh, my Facebook page. I have two Facebook pages, uh, but for tonight's debate, you can reach me at Black Jesus, B L A C K J E S U S, one word, Minister M I N I S T E R, on Facebook. And uh, if you all would go there at this time, if you are able to do so, and the third post uh, under uh, under that page, uh, you will see today's show uh, post and icon, and I will be presenting information as is posted there under today's tonight's show link, and uh, you can also from that page or go directly to uh, my personal page. Uh, which is George LeBlanc, G-E-O-R-G-E-L-A, capital B-L-A-N-C-H-E, also on Facebook. I am Black Jesus Minister, a servant of man via Christ and the Most High God, our Creator, Father, worshipped by many ancient names, such as Komba, K-O-M-B-A, of the black, twa, pygmy African peoples, the oldest humans on the planet, and by the name of Anu, A-N-U, of the black, Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian peoples, and by the name of El, E-L, Nebuchadnezzar, Ra, R-A, of the black Egyptians, and of the name El, El, Yan, E-L-Y-O-N, Yahweh, of the Canaanite, Hittite, Hebrew Israelites, via the first Most High Priest, Melchizedek, of the Most High God, and his black African Canaanite priest priesthood. I greet you all in the name of his peace and his truth, for it is his truth alone that will make us free. Peace. <laughs> Once again, that's Black Jesus Minister Blanche right there, uh, representing TRS Radio, but here inside the Lions Den on the Bay Talk B Radio. And uh, actually, there's people out there that's curious out there. Um, where did you get the name Black Jesus? Um, you know, did somebody give that label to you, or you want to break that down to listen to the audience? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I have to give uh, 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 some credit to uh, my friend and my brother who introduced me to Blog Talk Debates. Uh, Brother Supreme Poverty, Elijah Garvey of TRS Carbon Radio. Uh, not that he actually came up with the name, uh, but uh, he told me that uh, I needed to come up with a name, that it would make it a little bit more colorful to have a pseudonym or a name. Uh, once once I began debating uh, on Blog Talk Radio through that brother and on TRS Radio. 
And uh, so I said, I, I really didn't see any problem with my own name. But since uh, I knew that Jesus was black and that I knew that the uh, the original people of God were black African and the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites were black African, uh, I knew this from my mother, who I consider a master teacher, who taught me these things uh, from a very early age, uh, I'd say in my early teens. And as God would give her knowledge and understanding of who we are as God's people, she would give that knowledge to me. And uh, and then the Holy Spirit and God, my walk with God, because I've been raised in church all my life, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit and learning and teaching and, and interacting with other people like I'm interacting right now, has added to my knowledge and understanding. And uh, I came up with the name Black Jesus because I have been talking and teaching about Black Jesus since my teenage years, and not so much about the race of Jesus being black, but for the mere fact that black Jesus is the answer to racism of white superiority and black inferiority. And, uh, and I believe that that name crystallizes who I am as a minister, my, my mission as a minister, and, and, and the, the healing, the complete healing uh, that we as a people and the entire planet and all races of humanity will indeed receive through the true Christ Messiah, who is Black Jesus, Isa Yeshua. All right, once again, that's Black Jesus, Minister Blanche. And uh, we're going to introduce my boy Raheem Ali. Raheem, actually, if you're out there, do me a favor, press number one so I can see you on the switchboard. I, you know, got to press number one, brother, and uh, we can get you here. But uh, let me introduce him. I know he's here somewhere. Uh, my next special guest, though, he's, he's, no, uh, he's no rookie when it comes to debates inside the Lions' den. He's been here since season three inside the Lions' den. Uh, he's the first Muslim to represent inside the Lions' den and has been cons- consistent when, when being challenged. He's always uh, here to represent any time any contenders want to challenge the brother. Um, he's one of the most requested by the dedicated listeners to debate inside the Lions' den. You can check out his YouTube channel by typing in the search box Raheem4411. That's Raheem four four one one, representing from NYC. Raheem Ali, we're waiting for him to press number one, brother. Raheem, if you are, that got your message. Uh, as far as you saying that you're gonna call for another number, but you gotta press the number one because we have a whole lot of people on the switchboard. So um, we're just waiting for we're just waiting for Raheem Ali to call in, and once he calls in, we're gonna get this thing started. And uh, again, as a matter of fact. The number is 646-716-7320, and the chat room is officially open for those who are unaware. If you want to go inside the chat room, you have to go directly to the website. Go to www.blogstalkradio.com slash debate talk for you. Click on this debate, uh, are the original Arabs Africans? And when you scroll down all the way at the bottom, you're going to see the little box there where you can interact with me or the people that's inside the chat room. So, again, if you want to get an access to the chat room, go directly to the website. And, uh, again, you can, I'm going to take an email questions as well. Just go to uh, debatetalkview at gmail.com, and I'm going to be reading out some of your questions live for my special guests to answer your questions. Again, it's all about the listening audience getting answers to your questions. And uh, like I always tell people, whatever information you hear on Debate Talk View Radio, make sure you go back and do your own independent research to get some clarity. Don't just take anybody's word for it. Make sure you do your own independent research. But uh, I believe the brother is here. This is Raheem Ali. Welcome to the show. Peace, brother Sal. Can you hear me loud and clear? Loud and clear, man. Loud and clear. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about me. Yeah, this is Raheem Ali. Um, thanks for having me on. Peace to uh, Minister Blanche. And um, let's, let's get it on. I forgot to press one, so, you know, that I was on. I listened to the whole thing, but I forgot to press one. But I'm ready to get it on. All right, man. And uh, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, Raheem Ali is one of the first Muslim brothers to come inside the Lions Den and debate, and uh, he actually one of the only Muslim brothers to come back consistently and uh, you know debate contender after contender after contender. He's been here since season three of Debate Talk for you, so I definitely appreciate Raheem Ali. And do me a favor, Raheem, for those who aren't aware of who you are, give him a brief bio. You know how long you've been studying things in that nature. Go ahead. A brief bio, condensed. Um, basically, biblical knowledge, 34 years under scholars, Islamic knowledge under um, uh, 24 years, and I hail from the Islamic Cultural Center in New York City, 
and um, on 96th Street and 3rd Avenue. And I frequently get with other scholars to look at certain documents to even learn more as I go along. And um, basically, I just want to say for the introduction of tonight, as Sal gave the show, we will debate on ethnological extension of Northeast Africa and Arabia, history, literature, uh, culture, climatical extension of Northeast Africa, epigraphic evidence, linguistics, geographic evidence, and pictorial rock carvings, and phytogeographical evidence, and we're going to get into it, okay? Hence, there is no such thing as white Arabs. The original pure Arabs were dark, melanated people and took pride in their darkness. We will start with the beginning with man who was located in Northeast Africa, the Garden of Eden. And this was not a debate on theology. It's based on history. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Let's get it on, Sarah. Once again, for the new listeners out there, this is Debate Talk for you. This is the Lions Den. The number is 646-716-7320. It's all about the people, guys. We do this for the people out there. And, again, we appreciate your support. So we're going to go out with a bang with this debate. And, again, today's debate is entitled on the original Arabs, Africans. Uh, let me just go down uh, the, with the uh, debate rules. But, Raheem, before we uh, do that, uh, let the people know um, what made you want to challenge Black Jesus Minister Blanche. Uh, let me know how this debate came forth. Go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep it short. Basically, he said something in another show that you had that I definitely didn't agree with, uh, dealing with Arabs being, uh, I guess, so-called white or light-skinned or whatever. And tonight I'm going to prove who were the original Arabs, from Adam all the way to Muhammad, their time, and still now, and then um, let them know how they became lighter, and so forth. So that's why I wanted to challenge it. All right, then, Black Jesus Minister, what do you think about that challenge briefly before we begin? Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know why he said that this is not going to uh, deal with theology. This may be a, a cracking point and maybe some insight into my brother when he said it's not going to deal with theology, but yet he said he's going to uh, talk about Adam and Eve all the way to uh I forgot what he said, but uh, to uh, to the Arabs or something like that or whatever. And we all know that Arab, that Adam and Eve, you're definitely talking about scriptures. And make no doubt about this, dear brother, and and to the to the listeners, this is indeed, this is indeed, okay, a showdown between Christianity and Islam, the Torah Gospels versus the Quran. This is what it's all about. So we don't 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 let uh, my brother, you know, wash this over and 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 and, and uh, you know try to slick this by and make think pe- people think that this is just a regular debate. Ultimately, the foundation of this debate, and 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 and, and, and to a good degree, whenever you are in a contention or in, in a debate with a Muslim, uh, their agenda has always been to try to claim that Islam and the Quran is superior to the Tanakh and the Gospels and any other religion. And so this is this is that time, and that's what this debate is all about. So let's get this thing on, brother. All right, let's get it started, guys. Like I said, get your pen and pads ready, take down some notes. Again, this is the season five finale of Debate Talk for You. Tell a friend, share it on your personal page. Let them know that Debate Talk for You is on the air. The number is 646-716-7320. Let me go to the debate format for those who are new to Debate Talk for You radio. Of course, we're going to start off with an opening statement. That's going to be 12 minutes each. Once we get to the two-minute mark, you're going to hear this sound. That means there's two minutes left of your time. And once your time is totally up, you're going to hear this sound. That means your time is up. 
after that, we're going to go to the rebuttal. That's going to be 10 minutes each. And after that, we're going to have a cross-examination. That's going to be 10 minutes each. Each person has prepared several questions to ask one another. Due to time constraints, the maximum amount of time to answer a question will be one minute. Once again, due to time constraints, the maximum amount of time will be to answer a question will be one minute. Once you go over the one-minute mark, you're going to hear this sound. That means it's time to go to the next question. In the process of asking your question or answering the question, please make it brief. The person on the receiving side being asked questions, please save your questions when it's your cross-examination time. Of course, again, there's no foul language, no foul language. You know, we keep it clean. I had a big talk for you. Uh, let's keep it professional. Of course, I'm going to do my best to moderate. And please speak one person at a time so the listening audience and I can gain full understanding. I repeat, please speak one person at a time so the listening audience and I can gain full understanding. After that, we're going to take an intermission break, eight minutes, and then we're going to come back with a second rebuttal. That's going to be seven minutes each. And after that, my favorite part of the show, the public Q&A. That's where we, you, listen, the, you, the listening audience, will call in with your questions and your comments live. i uh, down in that number, 646-716-7320, and then press the number one, and we can add you to the conversation. As a matter of fact, we have people that's already calling in, pressing the number one way in advance. Uh, people that's familiar with the debate talk, for you know we have a whole line of questions during the Q&A time. So if you want to secure your slot, and you know you're going to definitely have a question, feel free to call in, and you can listen to the show over via phone or via Skype if you're worried about not listening listening to the show over the phone. You can still listen to the show via phone and via Skype. So, again, if you want to have a, if you have a question, you're going to have a question for this particular debate. The number is 646-716-7320. Of course, listen to the audience. There's no foul languages from you as well. Please make your comments brief through the high volume of callers. And everyone has limited time to ask a question unless I believe the dialogue is needed for edification. And finally, we're going to have the final statement. That's going to be seven minutes each. <clears throat> this is a reminder. When you're inside the lines, then be prepared to answer any and all questions. Keep in mind that your lack of making your answer clear or not not answering questions may affect your credibility. Once inside the lines, then please, no excuses during the debating process. You must earn your respect. Remember, it's not about winners or losers. It's all about the people learning from the information you provide. All right, so being that uh, Raheem Ali put the challenge out there, everybody knows the rules. Once you put a, a challenge out there, you got to start first. So we're going to begin with Raheem Ali. Again, we're going to get this thing started. So let me open up his phone line and go ahead. Assalamu alaikum to everybody out there. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is not about theology, and this is not about Islam versus Christianity. It's about the title that Sal gave. So I'm not going to use a whole bunch of Quranic verses. So let's get into it. From Adam all the way up to Muhammad, and even now, and we're going to see what the scholars say. Yahweh created from the ground, Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7, and placed him in Eden, east of Eden, in Arabia, which is northeast Africa. And I'm going to be able to prove that. Okay? So, Quran also says, man is created from the black mud. Sasalim min hachmaim. Okay? Right there, those two link together shows you that the first man on earth is a dark man. He even said the Twa people. Okay? So we're going to go by that. Remember? So, Sheikh Auntie Dia said, the African origin of civilization, myth or reality. When Muhammad was born, Arabia was a Negro colony. That's what he said. Page 151. In Origins of the Major Western Religions, Dr. Yosef bin Yakinah says Muhammad was in the family of the black race. Page 237. So Muhammad, we know, was an Arab. Sheikh Ati Diop also says, I have demonstrated in my earlier books all the biological and cultural kinships between Arabs and black African, Africans, a kinship so old that it goes back to the 5th millennium B.C. and in the beginning of the 4th with the birth of the Semitic world. Everybody knows who Sheikh Ati Diop was. He was one of the greatest brothers on this planet. Elijah Muhammad. 
Pittsburgh Courier, January 18, 1958, said, the white race has never accepted a black prophet of whom all were black. Even Abraham, Moses, and Jesus belong to the black nation, not to mention Muhammad, whom the white race knows was black. And he said it again in the message to the black man, page 62, Muhammad, an Arab, was a member of the black nation. Dana Marnish Reynolds, one of the baddest sisters on this planet, her, her, her observation is critical. She says the indigenous or black tribes of Arabia were those who were in ancient times migrated from Africa and were the earliest perverse and dispersers of the Semitic dialect. The Semitic family of languages, the most widespread of, is Arabic is a branch of a larger phylum called Afro-Asiatic, which consists of Semitic, ancient, Egypt, Berber, Kushite, Romanic, and Chadic families. While some scholars maintain the Afro-Asiatic originated in Asia, most linguists now accept that it originated in Africa, where five of the six generally recognized branches still reside. Dana Reynolds, African Heritage, uh, page 105. Tabari, another great, famed Muslim historian. The Quran, Ik Rasul Wal Muluk, the history of the messengers and kings. The following on the authority of Abdullah B. Abbas, the cousin of Prophet Muhammad of Arabia, said, the children of Sam, meaning Shem, settled in the center of the earth, which is between Satima and the sea, and between Yemen and Syria. Allah made the prophets from them, revealed the books to them, and made them beautiful, gave them black complexion, and gave them a black complexion with a light brownish undertone. You can see that his, uh, his book, um, Tariq Berry, The Unknown Arabs, clear, definite proof of the dark complexion of the original Arabs and the Arab origin of the so-called African Americans. Also, famous scholar, back, he saw Prophet Muhammad's family. Al-Jahis, 9th century historian of Muhammad, seen his family and himself said this, Al-Arab Tufkhar B. Sawad al lawn The Arabs pride themselves in their black color. And he wrote this in Fukur al Sudan al Al Bidan, page 207. And Gold Zihr, that's G O L D Z I H E R, Muslim Studies, chapter 1, verse 268, says the same exact thing. Ebony and Bronze, the book. Wayne Chandler, all of the chronicles that survived intact agreed that Ishmael and Muhammad were of the black race. A careful examination of history reveals that the prophet Muhammad was, the, was of the black race and was black in complexion. Golden Age of the Moors by Ivan Van Sertima. Mamadou Chinyeli said in this book, if you have the conscious community, you got this book. Since the revelation that inspired Muhammad in 622 A.D., Africans have been pivotal figures in the development of the Islamic faith. In fact, there is no time in the history of a faith that Islam can be dissociated from Africans. That's what this debate is about. Then he goes on to say, African blood figures in Muhammad's lineage and Africans in his upbringing and development. So I wonder what Blanche going to say to that. Debate is about the Arabs, so let's look up the Arabic word. Arab, al-Arab, comes from the root Arab, A-R-B. Al-Arab means the dark people. These were the pure original people. That's what this debate is about. This is an article from the concept of darkness in the Hebrew root, J.A. Loder, a linguist professor in this. The baddest lexicon on the planet in every university on this planet. Lisan al arab by Ibn Mansur said, al arab means the dark people. Al-Humra. So when they define it, it's 
Aswat Ul Jilda, dark skin, black skin. Khalis Ul Arab, pure Arab. If you were light skin, you are not considered a pure Arab. Renoko Rashidi, Golden Age of the Moor, page 67, says, A summary account of the Moors in antiquity would be incomplete without at least a brief overview of the African presence in early Arabia. The Arabian Peninsula, first inhabited more than 8,000 years, that's over 8,000 years ago, was earlier populated by blacks. Once dominated over the entire peninsula, the African presence in early Arabia is most clearly traceable through the Sabians. Sabians is in southern Yemen of Arabia. Golden Age of the Moors, page 67, Renoko Rashidi. Warner Dime, in his book, Ursameshi Religion, page 99, says, Semitic religion displays a reconstruction of the first Semitic people's religion. Dr. Dime shows us that these Semitic people had a Semitic language and culture with the epigraphic evidence and data was able to understand who these first Semitic people were who entered the Levant, which is in northern Arabia, 9,000 years ago, migrating from where? Africa. Once you leave one place and you go somewhere else, that you don't change. You don't change who you are. Black God, Julian Baldick, says in the introduction, the book presents for the first time a comparative study of Afro-Asiatic traditional religions of Northern Africa and Arabia. It argues that just as there is a common Afro-Asiatic family in this region, so too there is a common family of religions with inner logic to be found in myths and beliefs as far as apart as Yemen and Nigeria. So Nigeria, we know Nigeria is in West Africa and Yemen is in Northeast Africa. And you can see the similarities without no doubt. The original Arabs were dark. Okay? So as you can see, I didn't use no theology. I used scholars. And when I come back, I'm going to connect the land of Africa with Arabia. Scholarship. Not long-winded and just talking off the top of my head with theology. Right now, I'm not dealing as a Muslim. I'm a Muslim in the sense. I'm not dealing as a Muslim. This is not an Islamic Christianity conversation. Don't let this guy try to pull red herring and distract you from the original meaning. This is about the original Arabs being African in their complexion. And that's what it is. It's nothing more. It's not Muslim against. I'm not trying to convince nobody to become Muslim. You can ask Sal. I never asked nobody. You need to become Muslim. I never did that. So let's, let's stop the nonsense and let's let them get it in because I'm coming back with more. All right, once again, you're officially inside the Lions Den. This is the Bait Talk with you. You know that number, 646-716-7320. So now let's go to Black Jesus Minister Blanche with his opening statement. Again, it's 12 minutes each. The we'll moment of his phone line. And go ahead, brother. Absolutely, brother Sal. Uh, you know, this brother, he can try to talk over and try to, uh, you know, uh, 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 be a little wish-washy and, and say that this will not have any basis in theology. Uh, uh, trust me, it will. Uh, he's going to bring some information perhaps, but he's definitely going to go to the Quran. And uh, and I'm going to be bringing scriptures uh, from uh, the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, talking about the Old Testament, the Tanakh Torah. And also uh, my presentation is pretty much going to, going to uh, depend on common sense, and common knowledge and understanding, and some specific knowledge as well, and academia. Uh, let's go. Uh, what I wanted to say was that uh, a lot of black uh, Muslims and Islamic brothers and sisters struggle and try to find a way dealing with their struggle that Islam is a slave 
master's religion. Islam is directly tied to the Arabic people, and it was these Arabic people who are indeed Semites, but so are Africans, but they are Shemite Semites. Semites are not just one race of people. They are African and Arabs, okay? Now, we all know that the original people and the original man is black, as he agreed with me in reference to the pygmy people, okay? Uh, but does that mean that since we are the original human beings, that there are no other races of humans on the planet that evolved from us? Yes, indeed. We are, as black African people, the mothers and fathers of humanity, but the other races that coexist on this planet with us are here, as we can see, with our eyes. So the question is, when did they get here? Because we're not, this is totally not a black planet. It was at one point in time. So how did these, uh, uh, our children, the other races of humanity, how did they come to be? And when did they come to be? Now, if you leave it up to, to Brother Raheem, he would still think this is a, a totally black planet, okay? And that everybody is black. Like they're trying to paint the Arabs as, as being black because they're dealing with the, the pain and the reality that the original people, the original inhibit, inhabitants of Africa, who were not Arabs, they lived in Arabia. That's why Arabia is called Arabia, man, because Arabs lived in Arabia. But no, this brother here, he wants to make Africa the, 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 the indigenous land of Arabs who are a Semitic people, but they are the Shemite, Arabic, Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern brother, people who are indigenous to Arabia, not Africa, okay? On the other side of the Red Sea there, brother, okay? Now, um, so the question is, when did mankind begin? We talked about that. And when did the other races come into existence? And uh, I'm going to bring that into fruition. Now, uh, let me say this. Let me start off with this definition right here. Uh, improving but this simple definition, dictionary definition, that backs up my point that the indigenous land of the Arab is Arabia, not Africa. I think you can spell the difference between that and here's the difference, right? And we all know what Arabia is, and we know what Africa is. Now, check out this definition. Anybody can look this definition up. The definition for Arab, one of the many definitions for Arab, one of the main definitions for Arab, and you all can look this up on, just Google it, is that Arab means wanderer. Now, why in the world would any dictionary have this definition attached to the identity of an Arabic people from Arabia indigenous to Arabia, not Africa, okay, as being wanderers. Now, let me read this definition. And, again, I want all of you all to go to my Facebook page where I'm giving my presentation. You all can examine my information that I'm going to bring to the table tonight. Under Black Jesus, B-L-A-C-K-J-E-S-U-S, one word, minister, on Facebook. And go down to the third uh, post icon, which is tonight's show icon, and you will see this definition that I'm reading from, which is probably the second article under uh, tonight's show on the page. And it says, word origin and history for Arab, okay, expanding, it's a noun, late 14th century, meaning Arabes or A-R-A-B-E-S, a plural form, from old French Arabi, A-R-A-B-I, from Latin Arab, A-R-A-B-S, uh, 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 accusative Arabim, I, 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 I hope I said that right, accusative Arabim, A-R-A-B-E-M, from Greek Arab, A-R-A-P-S, from Arabic, and I'm, 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 from Arabic, indigenous name, did y'all hear that, the indigenous name, indigenous mean this is indigenous and unique to these people alone. But no, Brother Rahim and my fellow black Muslim brothers and sisters who struggle with the reality that the reason why 
uh, 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 Islam was infused in the African belief system was due to the original slavery of the Arab slavery of Africans. They were the first to enslave Africans. And it was the Europeans who were last. And there was a definite racial difference between the Europeans and Africans and the Arabs and Africans, and Arabs being uh, uh, indigenous to Arabia and an uh, Arab being their indigenous name. Not African. My God, man. Now, uh, indigenous name of the people, perhaps literally inhabitant of the desert and related to Hebrew Arabha, A-R-A-B-H-A, which means desert. When you look at Arabia, it is mostly desert. And check this out. This is the meaning that I want you guys to get. Meaning, uh, Arab means Meaning homeless. Y'all see that? H-O-M-E-L-E-S-S. Homeless little wanderer. Rahim, I'm going to let that sink in for a second for you, brother. I right, y'all let it sink in for three seconds. One, two, three. I know you're going to need more time than that. Meaning homeless little wanderer. Child of the street is from 1848, originally Arab of the city, in reference to nomadic ways and nomadic people. Did y'all hear that? In reference to nomadic ways and nomadic people. Now, the definition goes on to say a member of a Semitic people. They are Semitic, but they are Shemite Semitic, not Hamite, African Semitic. To those of you who, who are not familiar with that, the sons of Noah had three sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Japheth is the Europeans. Ham is the Africans, the indigenous Africans. The name is indigenous to them, coming from the word Afar, all right, which, which talks about the indigenous African Afar people, A-F-A-R, and the Ifri people, I-F-R-I people, the indigenous African people of Africa. And you can use those words individually or put them together, Afarica, Africa, or put them together and come up with the word Africa. And the I-C-A means land. Land of the Afar people, land of the Efri people. Land of Africa. So all that uh, garbage that you guys heard and that stupidity that you all heard from other people about not using the word uh, Africa because it's the name of a, uh, a Roman general who defeated uh, Hannibal. No, Scipio was not named, was, uh, Africanus was not his real name. Africanus was a name, a nickname, a, a victory nickname that was given to him for defeating Hannibal, meaning that he was the conqueror of the Africans who was Hannibal, who was a Phoenician, a black African of Carthage, North Africa. Not in Arabia, sir. Not called an Arabian, which is an indigenous name and an indigenous place that you're trying to make Africa. Silly. But, again, these are the mental tricks that my fellow brother African, uh, uh, black brothers and sisters who are Islamic and who know that Islam and who know that Muhammad is not an African. That's a big, fat lie. No, all on well that he is a Middle Eastern Arabic looking like the prototype, phenotypical Arab individual. Now, does that mean that there are no black Arabs? Yes, there are, but they are not the original. The title of this debate, are Arabs originally African? They are not, because Africans are indigenous to Africa, and Arabians are indigenous to Arabia, and they are both Semitic people. You have Semitic Africa, and you have Semitic Arabia, and these people, and I will show even within the Bible, these people intermarried with each other. And so there was mixture of, of, of the races from ancient times to now. So now you're going to take these, 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 these ancient mixtures and these contemporary mixtures, and you're going to now say, oh, they're the, well, because they got black Arabs, they're the original people. Hogwash, retardedness. Ignorance, stupidity, wake up, stop believing a lie. You are worshiping an inferior uh, 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 book, the Quran, inferior religion, Islam, 
which is a copycat of African monotheism and which is a copycat of the Canaanite Hebrew African, the African Canaanite, the African Hebrew Torah, Tanakh, Old Testament, and New Testament in the Quran called the Inhale, Inhale. Okay? It is an errant copycat of the Bible, and we got our black brothers and sisters who are trying to uh, 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 fictionalize and try to come up with information here and information there to try and justify, uh, 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 to try and justify uh, voluntarily uh, 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 leaving their legal name and taking uh, a lawful slave name, which is. All right, the number is 646-716-7320. You're now listening to Debate Talk View Radio. I see we have more and more people calling in. Welcome to the show. We have a lot of people making comments on social media, liking the page. I appreciate you guys that's uh, responding and uh, checking out this debate live right here on Debate Talk View Radio. But right now we're going to the rebuttal part of this debate. So we'll go back to Raheem Ali. It's 10 minutes for his rebuttal. And we'll go to his phone line. And go ahead. Peace again, everyone. You see this? Minister Blanche, all he did was bring up a, a definition out of the dictionary, which is wrong. I gave you the lexicon that's in universities say al ar means black, black or dark people. You see? He don't read Arabic. He hasn't studied under scholars and went to a university. I have. I didn't say one thing that was out of my mouth because I know he don't believe me, and I definitely don't believe in him. And then he's going to say, Arabs are not indigenous to Africa? I'm going to show you. This debate ain't over. Is Arabia part of Africa? Wonderful Ethiopians of the ancient Kushite Drusilla D. Houston, page 113. This is scholarship. This ain't talk scholarship. You have to show evidence. Everything you said historically wise was crazy. But I'm going to stay on topic. Because you're not. Arabia ex- resembles the African Sahara of which it is, but a continuation. Its general characteristics are African. Now I'm I'm, I'm hooking the landmass because if the landmass is the same, then the people that walk on both of it is the same. That's logical. You're not thinking. You just want to talk a lot. International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. Arabia, it says, the desert, although Arabia is considered by geographers as part of the continent of Asia, it belongs in almost every respect to Africa. The great bulk of the country is desert, of fine sand in the southern part, but consisting of coarse sand, gravel, and flints in the northern. It is, in fact, an offshoot from the great African Sahara Desert. Of the southern half, little is known, and it has never been crossed by the foot of Europeans. Now, it talks. I'm talking about life form, flora, and fauna. It breaks it down. We're still in the International Bible Encyclopedia. What is flora? Number one, the peninsula of Arabia belongs and has been said in its physical features to Africa. And its flora and fauna are those of that continent. Of all the products of all the soil, by far most important is the date palm. It flourishes in every oasis. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. What is flora? I'm breaking it down for you people. Number one, a treatise or, or, or a list of plants of an area or period. Number two, plant or bacterial life. Such life characteristic of a region. The region we're talking about is Africa and Arabia. And the period or special environment. What is fauna? Animal life of a region. Period or special environment. We know the environment on both sides of the Red Sea is Africa. Arabia is Northeast Africa. There are 
many different people in Yemen, which has been inundated with Iranians and more recently with Turks. As I have admit, uh, mentioned in the series of articles, of course, Iranians and Turks are Asians. Indigenous women are of African or original and claim African Dana Marnish, the Afro-Arabian origins of the Israelites and Ishmaelites. She is a scholar. She, she, she helped minister Hawass, the one who does the Egyptian. You have to go through him. She ministered him. This sister is so bad, it's ridiculous. This is scholarship, Blanche. Ali Al Missouri in the book Euro Jews and Afro Arabs: The Great Semitic Divergence in World History, page one forty, says, and I quote: A European decision to make Africa in at the Red Sea, like Blanche is trying to make out, has decisively denied. The Arabia Peninsula. Did you hear that? This is a scholar. Blanche ain't no scholar. Then he says, the tyranny of the sea is part of a tyranny of European geographical prejudices. He's helping the the so-called white man, if you don't know it or not. Just as European map makers could decree that on the map Europe was above Africa because they have maps that's upside down. What Europeans did was turn it upside, uh, 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 upside up where Europe is on top, right, and was above Africa instead of below those map makers. Also dictate that Africa ended at the Red Sea instead of the Persian Gulf. So, and I'm going to prove, Arabia is on both sides of the Red Sea and on both sides of the Nile River. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Stacey International, 1992, says, maps and geographic books make Arabia a part of Asia, but plant and animal life, as I showed you earlier, clearly bear out the theory that it is really an extension of Africa. Saudi Arabia's wildlife is an African complex of species. The animals and the plants of northern and northeastern Saudi Arabia are generally closer related to or identical with Sahara species. What is this dude Blanche talking about? You're not ready. Charles Finch, another top scholar. If you're in the conscious community, you know who Charles Finch is. He said, it has been customary to separate the Northeast from Africa ethnoculturally, though in the light of increasing Neolithic evidence, it is perhaps more nearly correct to consider the lands between Khartoum, Tigris, Euphrates, and the North as constituting one broad horizon in the period between 10,000 and 5,000 B.C. This broad horizon was composed substantially of saharo nihilite ethno-cultural elements. That's talking about the Nile. Nihilotic is the Nile. It is certainly true that what is known as the Near East is more properly thought of as um, Africa's Northeast extension because geologically and geographically, that is, in fact, what it is. That's what he said. Dr. John Henry Clark, Arabia and Northeast Africa, says, Western historians who try to separate Northeast Africa from Western Asia forget that there was a period in history when Northeast Africa and Western Asia were part of the same geographer and for part of the same cultural system. May he rest in peace. We all know that. Paul Bohannon, African Outline, Penguin Books, 1996, says, geographically, the whole of... A- The whole of Arabia Peninsula must be considered unitary with the African content. The Red Sea is best thought of as an inland lake with a small opening into the Indian Ocean. Sex and Race by J.A. Rogers says Arabia is but an extension of Africa. Maurizio Tozzi. The Emerging Picture of Prehistoric Arabia, Annual Review, Anthropology, Anthropology, 
volume 15, page 462. The Arabian Peninsula is the geological extension of Africa. Physically, the peninsula is a part of Africa, landscaped by the same geological and climatic processes as the Eastern Sahara and Ethiopian highlands. In general, Arabia today is the continuation of Af- the African system across the Red Sea. David Hatchett Childress, Lost Cities and Ancient Mysteries of Africa and Arabia. Why do they keep putting Africa and Arabia together? Because these brothers are putting it together like it's supposed to be. Geologically, Arabia is considered part of the Africa African continental plate. The Great Rift Valley has cut the Arabian Peninsula away from the African tectonic plate, creating the Jordan Valley, the Red Sea, and Lake Rudolph in East Africa. Encyclopedia Britannica, Arabia Desert. Look under Arabia Desert. It says, Western Arabia formed part of the African landmass before a rift occurred in the Earth's crust, as a result of which the Red Sea was formed in Africa, and the Arabian Peninsula finally became separate some five to six million years ago. Thus, the southern part of the half... The number is 646-716-7320. I know you guys take that a lot of notes right about now. Check it out this particular debate. And, again, this is the season five finale for the spring season of Debate Talk for You. We're going to come back on the air Friday, September 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time with Season 6 of the Big Talk for You. So I appreciate everybody that's listening for the finale show. And uh, we have a lot of listeners that's checking us out on Skype and via phone and uh, on social media. But let's go to Black Jesus Minister with his rebuttal. Again, that's going to be 10 minutes each. And remember, you, the listening audience, is going to be able to chime in with your questions, your comments later on. And here, you know, we're going to hear from you live. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. The phone line is open for anybody to call in. I see we got some Muslim brothers in the house is uh, checking us out on social media inside these uh, Facebook groups. So again, and you can call in later on. The number is six four six seven one six seven three two zero. But let's go to Black Jesus Minister with his uh, rebuttal and go ahead. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, you know, this brother, my brother. Uh, uh, you might want to consider by the time this debate is over, brother, coming back home. Come on back home to Africa, dear brother. And take on a name willingly, dear brother, which is African and not Arab. Maybe Kunta Kinte, brother, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? A real indigenous African name or Mandela, something like that, dear brother. All of y'all come on back home to the African Bible and monotheism that we created and that the Arabic people, our brothers and sisters too, who are Shemitic, but they are not African, who, who learned of monotheism from us, okay? We taught the world monotheism and polytheism. Now, listen, uh, uh, my brother, as I say, he can sit up here and quote all kind of stuff till your ears fall off, and I can do the same. And how fruitful is that? And I figured he was going to do something like that. But, see, I'm here to appeal to you all's thinking. I want you all to think. He wants to flood you with a bunch of information, but he don't want you to think. He wants to impress you with a bunch of information, but he doesn't want you to think. Now, I'm here as a minister of clarity and simplicity. That is greater than a bunch of gobbledygook, and this is what I'm laying down. Brother, sit down and take notes here, brother. Now, listen, y'all, what this, what this brother just got through saying in, in, in his talking uh, and, and, and uh, 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 quotes. Africa and Arabia, Africa and Arabia, Africa and Arabia, he kept saying it over and over that, that, as he was quoting from these scholars. Why did they say Africa and Arabia? Because we're talking about two different places and two different people. Y'all got y'all thinking caps on? Okay. Uh, why did he say, and why is it known to all of us that, uh, that the Semitic people are known as Afro-Asiatics? Afro-Asiatics. That's two words. That's two different people. Afro, Africans, Asiatics, Asians, that's two people, meaning that these two people were 
connected because they lived right next door to each other and they were intermarrying each other from the beginning of time, but it's still letting you know that there's a distinction between the two people and the two continents. But no, Brother Rahim, who's taking on a slave Arab name, needs to come on back to Africa and take on an African name if he wants to change his legal name and be free for real, brother. Don't trade your one slave name for another slave name. Come on back home, brother. A large one, you know, that's, that's a good African name, you know, since I'm from Houston and I'm a Rockets fan, you know, and I think they got a chance to win it all. Getting back to the debate. Uh, what was the other phrase he used? Afro-Arabs. Oh, my God. The, 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 hold on. Are y'all thinking? Do y'all have y'all thinking caps on? Afro-Arabs. Afro-Arabs. My God. That means two different peoples, two different nations, two different cultures, two different continents. But no, the Raheem Vortex wants to sit up here and, 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 make, and impress you all with a bunch of quotes and don't want you to think like I'm causing you to think and see the simplicity of this information because behind it all is the truth of knowing that he uh, absolutely represents a slave religion and a slave name that they're trying to hoodwink and befuddle all of us to think that the Quran and Islam is superior to Christianity and to uh, 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 Hebrew Israelites and our holy books. And the Quran is merely a copycat, a, 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 a translator, a transliterary errant copycat, a, a printed or a, a created in 600 AD, and the Tanakh existed thousands of years with the Canaanites. And with Abraham, thousands of years before what? Abraham ever penned, uh, I mean, before uh, 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 Muhammad ever penned the Quran. This is what this thing is all about. Trust me. He, he, oh, it's just intellectual. No, no. It's about uh, Christianity versus Islam, the copycat religion, the, 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 the name that when they want, uh, I'm getting rid of my slave name, but you're taking on another slave name. Now, getting back to my definition. Now, I hope y'all got that. I hope y'all got that. Don't fall for the, the, the stupidity and the trickery. afro Arabs, two people, two nations. afro Asiatics, two people, two nations. Africa-Arabia, two people, two nations, two cultures. My God, man, you really, this debate is over right there. Now let me go ahead and finish anyway with the rest of my information. Because I'm causing you all to think, and this is what this brother needs to do. That's how you get caught up in cults and stupidity. You don't think. Now. Uh, what does it say here? Uh, I left off talking about the definition of Arab, and he didn't he didn't uh, uh, deny my definition. And anybody can look it up. It means wanderer. It means nomadic people, mean, meaning homeless little wanderer. That's what it means. Arab means meaning homeless little wanderer. And then it goes on to say a member of a Semitic people originally inhabiting Arabia. It didn't say Africa. Arabia. Who spread? Who spread? from Arabia throughout the Middle East to North Africa and Spain during the 7th and 8th centuries A.D. My God, I'm whooping this man with a dictionary uh, 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 definition. You are whooped, homie. You silly. Now, let's go on to some more uh, uh, scholar scholarship. Simple thinking, common sense scholarship. I'm not going to trick you up with a bunch of quotes. Now, uh, we all know that the Pygmy Twa people are the original people on the earth, okay, or among the original people on the earth. And the, Twigby, the Pygmy Twa people, they, were, they, they spread from Africa all over the, the, the planet, all over the planet. And they were the first uh, uh, settlers and established people on the planet. We're talking about black people. And they didn't change colors. They stayed who they were. The Negritos all the way in the Philippines, Negritos in Japan, Negritos all in, in uh, uh, going down toward Australia, okay? Black tw uh, twop, uh, pygmy people. And these people were established. Now, how in the world are the Arabs, and how is Arab going to mean me, uh, uh, wandering people, the little wanderers? That means that these people were not established because they were not the original indigenous people of, 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 of the globe as the black people were the first. 
So this means this people, the Arabic people, which Arab is an indigenous name to the indigenous people who are indigenous to Arabia, which is an indigenous continent and, and, and culture, separate from Africa, across the Red Sea, but he wants to play stupid with you. He wants you to be stupid. Okay? He don't want you to think. Oh, Arabia is Africa. Oh, my God. Then Iceland is Africa, too. Europe is Africa, too. Asia is Africa, too. Because the pygmy to our people and African people inhabited the whole planet, and we established and colonized the entire planet. But there were other races of people who came along even after we were the first ones to colonize the entire planet. And a group of these people who were, who were different from the African people who lived on the whole of the of Africa, were Arabs who were Shemite, who were Semitic, but they were Semitic Shemite Arabs, not African. Now, uh, let's go to, uh, again, go to my Facebook page, Black Jesus, one word, minister, and on the third post icon, uh, tonight's show icon, you will see where I'm talking from, and I have uh, 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 information there that I'm, I'm reading now. Now, if we go back to Scripture, we know that Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Now, you all, anybody can go in here and look up thousands, if not millions, of what is called the Table of Nations. The Table of Nations is based upon the races of humanity that are divided by three racial categories, which corresponds with the Bible and the sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham, his name, and their names mean it's indigenous to the color of their skin. Ham means dark skin. Sham means olive or brown skin. Jafet means fair skin. So their names and these colors and these races began after the flood with Noah. And these people divided into their lands and into their nations, as the scripture says in Genesis 10. And the Hamitic African people were indigenous to Africa. And the Japhetic people, they left and went to Europe and colonized Europe. And the Asiatics, not the Afro, not the Africans, but the Asiatic Arabs, because that's two different people, Afro-Asiatics, Arabs, was in Arabia and the Middle East. And they are descendants of Sham. And secular and uh, non-secular historians uh, agree, uh, uh, secular. Uh, once again, you're now listening to Debate Talk Radio. The title of this debate are the original Arabs Africans. Are the original Arabs Africans? My special guest is Raheem Ali versus Minister Blanche. Again, you know that number, 646-716-7320. Later on, we're going to hear from you, the listening audience, to hear what you guys got to say. But right about now, we're going to the cross-examination part of this debate. And each supporter has prepared some questions to ask one another. And due to time constraints, the maximum amount of time to answer a question will be one minute. And once the one-minute mark is up, you're going to hear this sound. And that means it's time to go to the next question. Again, once uh, the opponent asks a question, uh, the person answering the question is going to have one minute uninterrupted to answer the question. So we're going to go to Raheem Ali. He's going to ask questions to Minister Blanche right now. And uh, once again, we're going to go to the people later on or during the public Q&A, so don't stand by. And we're going to hear from you guys later on. Let's go to Raheem Ali. And let me open up the phone lines. You can ask your questions, brother. That. Peace, brother Sal. I don't need to ask this dude no questions. You know why? This dude said, and the scholar said, but he ain't give one reference. All he did was talk. Then this dude just gave me the debate. He said, Kunta Kente. Don't he know Kunta Kente, that whole line, that, that lineage was Muslim? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what the, what is he talking about? Oh, Elijah, oh, then he said Elijah Wan. I met Elijah Wan. He came down to the mosque where I was. Don't you know he's Muslim? I don't need to ask this dude oh, no okay. no question. <laughs> I'm going to keep presenting scholarship as I have oh. done. And that's why he's laughing, because if we was in person <laughs> doing this debate, I would smash you. I would blast you off this oh, planet because I got pictures and everything. Sal, give the seven minutes. <laughs> To people that want to call in, please put the, tag that seven minutes on the people call in. Let him ask me questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. All 
by Black Jesus Minister. This is your time. You want to ask the brother some questions? Go ahead. Indeed. Uh, first of all, you know, I was being funny. You know, uh, I, I guess he didn't he didn't get that. You know, but uh, but if I was hurting as bad as he was, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't laugh either. Now, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, Hakeem is an Arabic first name. Olajuwon is indigenous African. Are you a- okay. asking me a question? Oh, 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 excuse me, man, man, excuse me. Oh, hold on, brother. I'm about to. I'm, I'm addressing what you said, and I'm gonna ask you a question. Just calm down. I know the dude. Calm down. The- Just calm down. Now, 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 hold on, brother. Now, and I said to you, dear brother, and you know the fact. You know the truth, bro. Okay. You know that the Arabs enslaved Africans, dear brother, and it, and that Africans had to become a uh, 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 Muslim at the point of the blade. To, uh, uh, in, in many cases, and we know that there are Christian Arabs, there are Muslim Arabs, that there's a mixture of everything, brother. Come on, stop with that, man. We're talking about, we're talking about the very beginning, okay? We're talking about the very beginning of all the Arabs, the first Arabs, the first. We're not talking about Elijah one as I was being funny, uh, Kuta Kente as I was being funny, dear brother. We're talking about the original. Don't get fixed up on, on, on what I'm talking about on a joke. Now, my question to you is, dear brother, do you, do you agree with the table of nations that's, that's all over the Internet, that's, that's anybody that got common sense or, or read anything, where it says that the human race was divided up by three racial categories, Negroid, Caucasoid, and Mongoloid? Do you agree with that, sir? Common knowledge. First of all, the Caucasian man who made that assumption gave it a category. <laughs> hold on. Hold, you, what you going to do? You going to let me answer what? The black Jesus minister, let him answer the question. Let him answer. Okay. Because right now you're acting like a clown, and this, ain't, this, this is very serious. The, the Caucasian who made these three assumptions, okay, if you know it or not, name the categories because of the anthropology. So if you, I'm talking about the original people. We know, and scientists know, the original man is from Africa, and that's my answer. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Y'all see how he ran around? He ran, ran around that question, <laughs> homie. Just saying, this thing is over with, brother. If anybody got common sense. Now, hold on, Black oh, my, hold, my, hold, my, hold my, on, my next question. Hold on, Black you, you, you yeah. gave me your time. Now, be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask one yeah, more question. Hold, yeah. So now, uh, you, you, uh, you, you danced around that question, and which, which the answer is, the true answer is, is that yes, it is legit. And, it's, and it goes beyond the, the European who found this out later on, okay? And this goes back to Scripture, coincides with Scripture, okay? And that the Asiatics, the Afro Asiatics, Afro on on the left side, Asiatics on the right, Afro's on the left side, that's Africa. If you look at a map, Africa's on your left side. And you look to your right, Asia, Arab, Arabia, the of the indigenous people, indigenous Arabs is on the right hand side. Do you agree with that, sir? Yes or no? And that they are separated by the Red Sea. Do you agree with that, sir? My answer to you is the Evidence I just gave to you in this debate. <laughs> I'm not running around nothing. Yeah, you right. Ar- Ar- Arabia is part of Africa. Which part of that didn't you understand in the debate? Your, uh, see, your plan, brother. your plan. Hold yeah. on, <laughs> hold on. You ask me a question, and I got a minute. He <laughs> right? has a minute un- you, interrupted. Yeah, that. you, 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 you ask the question, so I'm answering. And then you got the audacity to talk about Negroid this and Negroid that. DNA leads back to Africa, whether they are Asian, whatever the case may be, or Caucasoid, all leads back to Africa. That's my point. So, as I've said in my debate, Africa and Arabia is one. They share the same continental plate. How how ignorant are you? That's my answer. (laughs) Okay. Now, dear brother. Uh, we all know that it, according to the Bible and the Tanakh and the Old Testament, dear brother, that the division of the races took place at the Tower of Babel. 
and they, and then they went to their their own lands into their own nation, as it says in Genesis ten, with their own tongues, their own cultures. God divided these people up, all of humanity who was on the one umbrella, on the Nimrod at the Tower of Babel, according to their languages, their culture, and their race. He gave them different languages where they couldn't communicate with each other. Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Now, dear brother, do you dis- do you or do you agree or do you disagree with the Egyptian uh, histography of the different races that that a classification of races? That I have that I have posted on my page for those of you who are here, or who, who are on this show, Black Jesus, one word, Minister, one word, uh, uh, Minister. Uh, uh, I have the uh, histor- historiography pictures of ancient Egypt, depiction of the different races of humanity. Are you familiar with that? And if you are, do you agree or disagree with that, sir? I am very familiar and aware of Egypt and where they came from. Good, good. Now, uh, now, when you're looking at one of the pictures that I have here, it has two black people as being Egyptian and African, because the original Egyptians were Nubian, and then it has the European and it has the Shemite, the European and the Shemite, and they are different colors and nowhere close to being black here, brother. Do you agree or disagree with that ancient African history, sir? Yes or no? First of all, he has a minute to answer. That first of all, I have pictures right here. We're not talking about no Shemites. We're talking about Arabians. <laughs> I, have pictures, I have pictures of Arabians right now. Come on, home, brother. Right now, with broad noses, full lips, and dark skin. <laughs> and this debate ain't even over. So uh, we're not talking about Shemites. If you're, you're going to talk about Shem, if you're going to talk about Shem. <laughs> you need you need to understand the Israelites came out of them, the Arabs also. Yeah, <laughs> okay, bro. Enough, enough, so enough of you running around, brother. Okay, I got you. Enough hey, of you Jesus, you can't you can't you can't interrupt when he's uh you can't interrupt when he's answering though. But go ahead. Go with your next question. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, my Jesus, next, go with your next question. Uh, my, yeah, uh, people. Again, y'all just need to think. See, I I, I believe in simplicity. Because see that is that is more superior than a bunch of information that you don't that you will not break down in its simplest form. Now uh, he won't he he won't deal with it directly. He knows about it, but he ain't gonna agree with it because it's the truth. Ain't nobody trying to trick nobody in this Egypt, Egyptian history. And, and and go to my Facebook page, Black Jesus one word, Minister one word, and look at these Egyptian history historiography of the human races, and you will see at the very top. You will see again the black Nubian Egyptian and the, and the brown skin uh, 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 Mizram Egyptian, and they're both Africans. And then you'll see the, the, the olive complexion Shemites in between the two Africans and the European man. This is talking about the distinctions and the beginnings of humanity. And this man trying to vortex you guys, trying to. Uh, pull, pull a, 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 a sham job on Are you going to preach? Are you going to preach? So, yeah, ask so, you a question? So, so, okay, so dear brother, again, I'm asking you one more time, at this picture that I just described to you that you heard, do you agree or disagree with this? You won't a- answer that. You stop running around, stop dancing. First of all, I'm going to tell you again. First of all, I have Arabian pictures. Open up your ears. I have Arabian pictures that have <laughs> broad noses, and thick lips, oh, tall lips, oh, and dark man. skin. You see, you are a clown for real. See, all you're doing is talking. You said I'm a brain. So I, uh, the scholar said, but you ain't show not one scholarship. You talking about me bringing scholarship? But I, all I've been doing was talking with their mouths. I haven't said nothing of my own because <laughs> they are scholars. You're not a scholar. By you giving all this evidence, and I'm seeing, you haven't studied under no one, under no university. What I'm seeing <laughs> is you are totally wrong, and you're laughing because you know you're wrong. And that's yeah. what I'm, I say. If I was in a, per, a presentation with a PowerPoint, I would smash you to bits. Uh, my brother is, is hot. Of because he's mad. Oh, 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 o
He's mad. He's mad because I'm whooping his behind. You know what? No, 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 no. I know. I'm whooping his behind. I'm whooping his behind. You with a, with a dictionary definition. You haven't presented nothing to him. With a dictionary definition and Egyptian history, brother, that you, you ain't, you haven't. Oh, he is getting hot in here, like my man Nelly said. <laughs> Once again, it's Debate Talk. You ready? I know you guys enjoy this particular debate. And again, we're going to hear from the people later on. I see people pressing number one already way in advance. And we're going to go down in order to take your questions and your comments. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. For those people that just joined in, today's show is entitled, Are the Original Arabs African? Are the Original Arabs African? This is the finale debate for Season 5 of Debate Talk Free Radio. And we're going to be back on the air Friday, September 11th for Season 6 of Debate Talk for You. My special guest is Raheem Ali versus Minister Blanche. We're going to take a eight-minute intermission break right about now. We're going to come back with a second rebuttal, and after that, we're going to go to the public Q&A. So don't you go nowhere. Stand by. We'll be right back after these messages. You are now inside the lion's den. <laughs> Welcome to the B-Tofi Radio. What it do, people? It's your boy B. Lit Dive, and I'm chilling over here with my man Sal Showtime, man. And I'm just here to let y'all know that there's only one place that you need to go to hear the word from the word, man. And that's at debate talk for you, man. I'm gonna slow it down, man, because a lot of people slow. I speak fast because I'm from New York, but you know I'm gonna slow it down, man. That's debate talk for you. Hosted by my man Sit Al Showtime. You dig? Keep it tuned, man. You already know what it is. So, Shalom, call Allah Yahweh by Shim Shai. It's Brother Chief Priest Alazar Bun Lawyer, aka the Gorilla Hebrew, representing Exodus 1715, aka the Sect of the Sakari. And you know where I'm at. Every Friday, the Lions Den. With Sal Showtime on Debate Talk for you, you can catch me on there often ripping somebody head off, tearing down some false doctrine. Big shout out to all the Debate Talk for you family and listeners and supporters out there. You know, keep supporting the movement and, you know, beautiful edification is getting put out to the masses right now. So again, you know, Shalom and call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh This is it, y'all. The king is coming from the sky. Let's get rich, y'all. The Muslim use his hand and wipe away our tears, y'all. And be fearless, cause there's nothing here to fear, y'all. This okay. is it, y'all. Look, they try to shine, but they not polished Only the people at the bottom can get top knowledge My people are Israel, you with a cap? I say no, it's spirits in high places, so my cap is the low Everything you heard wrong, you're about to hear right No Christmas, but through the spirit, I rap you something nice Give me some pen and some paper, I send it back to you tonight The third time the charm, well I'm three past twice, keep your bows here We don't deal with no idols Wisdom said I was killing them, somebody check their vitals Won't let a demon me heal unless he rolling down when we up a hundred game over but they feel they down one so they gonna keep coming and we gonna keep leaving them running the knowledge of this world is stupid it mean nothing don't care if you don't think what i say won't fly because every beat i get on i do it for the most high I- This is it, y'all. The king is coming from the sky. Let's get rich, y'all. The Muslim use his hand and wipe away our tears, y'all. And be fearless, cause there's nothing here to fear, y'all. This is it, y'all. This is it, y'all. The king is coming from the sky. Let's get rich, y'all. The Muslim use his hand and wipe away our tears, y'all. And be fearless, cause there's nothing here to fear, y'all. This is it, y'all. This is it. All praises, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe. This is Nasi Yashuva of Shomri HaTorah in Atlanta. And if I'm not reading my Torah or suplexing some false deity, I'm listening to my man, Sal Showtime, in Debate Talk for You Radio. Beautiful. Keep doing the good work, brother, bringing forth the information and spreading that love. 
good, ladies and gentlemen of the Debate Talk for You audience. It's your boy, Sound Mind, representing Yaza Monte over here in the 315 area. I'd like to give a couple shout outs real quick. First and foremost, all praise to the creator, the supreme intellect of the universe, Yaza Post. I'd like to give a big shout out to my brothers over there at ABT. My brothers at the KOJ, Prophet 613 out in LA. My big brother, Nasi Yashu L. And last but certainly not least, your host, my man with the master plan, the chief rocker, my boy and big brother, Sal Showtime, for putting together a platform for people to bring their information to the table and do get out right here in Alliance Den. You heard it from your boy. Sound mind first. This is the Hebrew invasion, baby. Get out the way or get ran over. Peace. This is Mikael, coming straight out of Cali. And when I'm not chasing some demon back to outer space to find another race, I'm listening to debate talk for you. Keep pleasing the most high, Sal. Hebrew war machine. Drop bombs on them. Since I hit return to sender. 
man, that's a sucker move. When you get to look, every job three paycheck versus paying ten percent over a year, they beat you out of more money. That's right. Sit down and make a fool out of you. Born a sinner, but I'm a die saint. Amen. Born a sinner, but I'm a This your brother John Boy, and I'm with Sal Showtime. And this is Debate Talk for You. Hey, what's going on? This is Felix, also known as Enoch, student at Absolute Bible Truth. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Sal Showtime and Debate Talk for You. I'm a frequent listener, been listening since season one. Uh, keep doing your thing. And for everybody out there who can hear this, send in your donations. So, the big talk for you, go on for a long time. All right, y'all. Peace. This is Eli. I'm checking out the big talk for you radio. When I want to hear the hottest debates in the country, I stay tuned. Shout out to Sal doing his thing. Keep doing the great work, man, and I'm going to keep tuning in. You are now inside the lion's den. <laughs> Welcome to the big talk for you radio. This is Ronald Francois representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out Debate Talk for You Radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime. All right, guys, you're now rocking with the best. This is Debate Talk for You, season five finale. And again, we're in the Lions Den. And uh, it's been a classic debate so far. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. We have a lot of people standing by, pressing number one, waiting for the public Q&A. Again, if you're listening on social media, you can just call in with your questions, your comments. Just keep it clean, no foul language. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. Then press number one, and we can add you into the conversation. And the chat room is officially open, guys. If you want to get an access to the chat room and you want to type in your question rather than call in, let's go directly to the website, www.blogtalkradio.com. Talk for you. Click on this debate on the original Arabs, Africans, and when you scroll down at the bottom, you're going to see a little box there where you can type in your question and I will read it out live for my uh, contenders to answer those questions. Again, we're going to go to the people later on, but uh, right about now, we're going to go to the second rebuttal part of this debate. And let me see, uh, I believe Raheem, uh, if you're out there, press number one, Raheem. I don't see you on the switchboard anymore. Press number one. Okay, I got you now. There we go. And we're going to get this uh, second rebuttal started, and that's going to be seven minutes each. And right after the second rebuttals, we're going to go to the people to hear what you guys got to say. So, again, if you want to, you know, hold the slot, because we have a lot of people pressing number one, feel free to call in in advance and to stand by, and I'm going to go, go down in order and take your questions. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. We like hearing from the people. And, again, the show is archived, so you can always go back and go check it out later on. So let's go to Raheem Ali with a second rebuttal. You can go ahead, brother. Peace again, everyone. This man talked about Semitic people, right? Okay. I already gave what Warner Dime, who's an Oriental scholar, said. Listen to what he said. Dr. Dime shows us these Semitic people have Semitic language and culture, which epigraphic evidence and data was able to understand that who these first Semitic people, Levant, 9,000 years ago, migrating from where? The heart of Africa. The Semites were from Africa. So what is he talking about? What is he talking about? They were from Africa. This is a top scholar in the, in, in the world. Now, let's keep it moving. Ancient Arabia was occupied by a people far different than most modern day occupants because they are lighter Arabs. And I'm going to show you why they are lighter Arabs. He's not going to go into this. This dude, this is the Sal Showtime show. Over here, we show documentation, not speculation. I don't know how y'all do it at TRS, but you got to show documentation. In the days of Muhammad and the Roman colonization of Palestine, North Africa, and uh, uh, Arabia, the term Arab was much more than a nationality. It specifically referred to peoples whose appearance, customs, and language were the same as the nomadic peoples on the African side of the Red Sea. Did it say 
Arabia side? No, it said the African side of the Red Sea. What differences there were between them were more cultural and environmental than anything else. Strabo, around the first century uh, B.C., other writers speak of the area east of the Nile in Africa as Arabia. Smash, this debate is over. And the people are persistently and indiscriminately and sometimes simultaneously referred to as either Arabs, Indians, or Ethiopians. It is from the ancient writings on the Arabs that the people of the Arabian Peninsula and the non-immigrant indigenous nomads of the Horn were considered ethnically one and the same and thought to have originated in areas near the cataracts of the Nile. Dana Reynolds Marniche in the book, The African History, uh, The African Heritage and Ethno History of the Moors. In Ivan Van Sertima, Golden Age of the Moor, page 99, 100, 105, and 106. See, the Nile is in Africa. That's no brainer. Babylon to Timbuktu, page 37. It says black Arabs, black Jews, and Ethiopians. It says black Arabs, black Jews, and black Ethiopians. There were many Kushite tribes, Ethiopians, living in northern, western, and southern sections of Arabia. Many of the Arabs are not black today because of the crossing with white slaves in their households and harems. First of all, you don't know what you're talking about. Arabs had uh, so-called black slaves. They had white slaves. And we, we can get into that at a different um, subject. But he's telling you because of the white slaves. And I can show you who sold them to him right now. The pure Arabs and the East Africans are indeed kith and kin. Hope you know what those definitions are. Prime Minister of Muscat and Oman, which is in Arabia, says, reported in his work, The Arabs, the original inhabitants, this is him talking, the original inhabitants of Arabia were not the familiar Arabs of our time, meaning these mixed. See, I'm, I'm keeping everything in order, not these mixed Arabs. The pure, as I said in the beginning, out of, out of means uh, dark Arab, not no wanderer. The original inhabitants of Arabia were not familiar with Arabs of our time, but a very, very much darker people. A proto Negroid belt of mankind stretched across the ancient world to Malaya. So that goes straight, stretches all the way back. I'm going to, I got something for you. Hold on. Questions of Semitic linguistics. See, I'm keeping my promise. I said I was going to show you all this stuff, and I'm showing it to you. University of Barcelona, proto Semitic, formed part of a mass of people who moving out from the heart of Africa again spread north and reached the Mediterranean coast, which is the Levant, and beyond. The Semitic family was the uh, spread head of, the, of one of the expansive movements of peoples towards Asia, from the heart of Africa. This person is saying the same thing Warner Dunn said. David Golden Today we see the Red Sea separating two distant lands, Africa and Arabia. But in antiquity, this dude is all modern. He, he don't even know he have a European paradigm. He don't even know it. But in antiquity, it was not seen that way. Indeed, in the world of classical antiquity from Herodotus to Strabo, the term Arabia included the area across the Red Sea up until the now. I'm sitting here, people, with a document of Herodotus map with Arabia on both sides, right? I'm sitting here looking at it. Then I have another map from the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Dictionary. It shows Arabia is on both sides of the Nile, on both sides of the Red Sea, stretching all the way back to India. I have, I have it right here. I'm going to make a YouTube video so y'all can see it for yourselves. Then I have another one from Discoveries of Egypt and Ethiopia, of, of the peninsula of Sinai. This is a book I have. It shows Arabia is on the other side of the Red Sea. And I'm going to show it to you. I end it right there, Sal.
646-716-7320. Right after we get Black Jesus Minister Blanche's uh, second rebuttal, we're going to go to you, the people out there. And again, the phone lines is open to anybody across the globe that wants to chime in. All I ask is that you keep it clean, keep it professional while you're dialoguing. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. Right after this, we're going to go to the people out there. By the way, I just want to let you guys know about some projects I'm going to be working on this summer. Uh, I actually have a show on YouTube that's going to come out in actually in June. It's called What Show Status. It's going to be it's basically uh, a couple brothers coming together. We're going to be talking about relationships and things of that nature. So look out for that on YouTube. It's called What Show Status. And uh, so we'll spell what? Yo, we'll spell Y O status. <laughs> What's your status? And I'm also looking, uh, working on um, the Showtime Report, and that's going to also come out in June on Blog Talk Radio. That's going to be a separate show where I'm going to be just interviewing uh, a couple brothers once a week, you know, and uh, just look out for those shows, the Showtime Report and What's Your Status. I'm going to keep you guys po- uh, posted on my Facebook page. Just type in the search box, Sal Showtime, and uh, send me a friend request, and I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on with some of the projects I'm working on for the summer before we start season six of the Bay Talk for you. But let's get to the second rebuttal. Once again, we're going to Black Jesus Minister Blanche. Open up his phone line and go ahead. Ice Cream Raheem. What's going on, my brother? Y'all licking on that ice cream? Are y'all licking on that ice cream? Raheem laying down. Oh, my God. Brother Raheem, those of you all who are listening, this man just got whooped with a dictionary definition, the Bible scripture references to Genesis 10, he drips Egyptian hieroglyphic pictures of the races, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, 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 thousands of years before uh, Muhammad wrote the Bible in 600, uh, wrote the Quran in 600 AD, okay, and got whooped by common sense. Now, I'm rolling with the people who got common sense because, see, the true mark of intelligence is taking tons of information and breaking it down to its simplest form. Let me say that again, Brother Raheem, so that you can really understand what, what true intelligence and academia is all about, brother, instead of just uh, 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 blurbing out quotes and still being ignorant. Now, uh, brother, true intelligence and academia is being able to consume much information and break it down and present it in its simplest form so that anybody can understand it there, brother. And that's what I'm doing for you right now, brother. Come on back home, Raheem. Come on back home to Africa, dear brother. Lay down that slave Arabic name and pick you up an African name, dear brother. Home to Africa, not Arabia, brother. Man, you need to quit. But that's okay. You can quit by the time this debate is over with. Now, uh... People, now, uh, to those of you who ain't licking on Raheem's ice cream, uh, this man said in his logic, think about this now, in his quote, Afro-Arab, Afro-hyphen or Afro-slash-Arab, Afro-slash-hyphen Asiatics, Africa-slash-hyphen Arabia. These were uh, uh, mentions and quotes that he was talking about that we're all familiar with, Throughout all of his uh, uh, scholarly quotes, in reference to the people that he's talking about, we know that the, uh, uh, the Arabs and Africans intermarried one another, intermingled with, with each other, and he's not going to deny the fact that I'm saying that what the Africans are, are considered to be Semitic and the Arabs are considered to be Semitic, but they are two different people, as as is, as is stated out of his own mouth, his own mouth and his own quotes. And common sense convicts this brother and determines that he lost the debate because he's trying too hard to hold on to that slave name and that Arabic identity and does not want to come home to Africa. He wants to stay in Arabia. He wants to continue to be a wanderer while the original man, who was the black man, the African man, was already there thousands of years. Yes, there were Africans in Arabia, but they weren't the majority population. There were, there were uh, uh, population shifts all over the world. happens all the time. So please, we're not going to fall for that. It, it, now, you all are not going to be stupid like, like he wants you to be and sit up here and hear this man. Play it back and listen for yourself. Afro-Arabs, 
Afro-Asiatics, as well as Africa, Arabia, throughout all of his quotes, that means two different people, two different nations, two different races, two different cultures. Everything is different. But they cooperate. They are together in cooperation and as a people intermingling, intermarrying with one another. Yes, they were black Arabs. We're talking about the original. Okay? The originals were not. And that is what I have proven thus far. Because in my man's logic, in Ice Cream Raheem's logic, if he quoted somebody and read, boy slash girl, boy hyphen girl, this fool is going to sit up here and try to convince you that the boy and girl is the same thing. See, this is the asinine stupidity that causes a lot of people and deceives a lot of people into retardedness. Come on back home, Ice Cream. Raheem, come on back home to Africa, brother. Drop that slave Arabic name and embrace the African Canaanite uh, Tanakh and, 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 and gospel of Melchizedek and the Canaanite people and of the Hebrew Israelites of Abraham. Of, of Abraham. Come on back home, homie. And stop sitting up here, all, and all my Muslim brothers and sisters, stop sitting up here flashing and being fooled by these, by these Semitic, Shemite Arabs running around here trying to say that their copycat book is superior to your, to, to your book, the African Bible, to not monotheism that you created. We look like clowns walking around here, what, carrying their book, which is a copycat, an errant copycat of our religion. Now, um, as I stated earlier, uh, you all can go to my page on Facebook, Black Jesus, one word, minister, one word, and you all can see the table of nations. There are thousands of examples of the table of nations, of the three different races, uh, Caucasoid, uh, Negroid, and Mongoloid, okay? And these coincide with the three sons of Noah, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. And we look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics of the human races, and you will see two Africans, one black, one brown. And on another picture, you'll see two black, and it says they are, these are the two blacks are the Egyptians, the Nubians, the original Egyptians. And then on another, there's a brown Egyptian, which, which are the descendants of Mizraim, because you've got brown skinned Africans. So these are African people in Egypt. And then the other two are one is white and the other is, is Semitic Arabic of, of paler, lighter skin. These are original people with original cultures that the Egyptian history has, pro, has proclaimed here in, in stone. And this man says, I have not brought no, no academic bullcrap. You wish, okay? All you got to do is look. But, and when I asked him the question about the Nadis, he wouldn't touch it because the debate is over. Stop being the clown, brother. You thought you had a point. You got mad. That's fine. And I'm glad we had this debate because there's a lot of things that need to be said. And people need to be All right, this is my favorite part of the show. This is the public Q&A where you, the listening audience, can call in with your questions and your comments live. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. You want to hear from the people out there. And if you want to call in, just press number one, and we can add you to the conversation. However, we have people already standing by patiently waiting to ask that question, and I appreciate you guys for standing by waiting to uh, ask the question. And, again, uh, keep it clean, keep it professional. Uh, once again, the number is 646 646- 716-7320. And by the way, I see people in the chat room. I see you guys in the chat room. I'm going to get to your questions as well, and I'm going to read them out uh, to my special guests. And uh, for my special guests that's on the panel, uh, once you answer the questions, you can feel free to dialogue with each other briefly before we go to the next question. Uh, so let's go to the first person. Let's go to let's go to 423-320. You're live on air. Hey, Brother Sal. Thank you for answering my call. I was just uh, listening to the mic. Let me first uh, get the praises. I'll pray to the Most High God, who's possessed of heaven and earth, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, 
Yeah, I was just listening to the uh, the original, uh, the two guys, Raheem, Brother Raheem and Minister uh, Blunt, and uh, the original Arabs are, are the Africans. Well, here's my spiel. I, uh, I believe they, the Arabs, the original Arabs are uh, Hebrew <clears throat> from the tribe of Shem. If you can remember uh in the in the Bible, um in the the first uh, you know, I know exactly the, what you're uh, talking about, sister. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, uh so um Abraham mm-hmm. he had two sons mm-hmm. which was the promise and Ishmael. Mm-hmm. Who was also Abraham's son, but uh, Sarah, you know, saw that Hagar, you know, had some indignation, you know, in her spirit, you know, ambition that Ishmael was going to take Isaac's place. So Sarah told Abraham to get rid of her and Ishmael. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm quite sure uh, Abraham, you know, he didn't send Hagar and Ishmael, Ishmael away, a- a- even though it doesn't indicate it. I'm sure he sent him away with priests and things to build him up in the ammunition of the Lord, you know. And when they had, they, they had this uh, conversation, Stone place where it was a place of worship where the people could come to worship God. But yeah. now today, I don't know what exactly happened, but he, he, they're not supposed to be walking around some rock or square block uh, with a rock inside of it. But that you know, the, I don't know how the the Muslim, but the, the Arabs, original Arabs, were um, Shemite, Hebrew Shemite, Shemite. From the tribe of Abraham and Ishmael, he he was blessed also because he begot twelve princes. So uh, the original uh, were Hebrew, and then that's uh, my belief. And then um, I, I know this is off point, but Brother Josh, Israel uh, it's interracial marriages. Is a sin according to First Kings. According to First Kings, Josh, brother Josh is not here. What are you? As, you know, just throwing that out there because he he don't he 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 won't answer my calls. According to First Kings eleven one through six. Uh, sister, uh, hold on. But anyway, did that so? You taking this way off course? Yeah, yeah, brother, yeah, yeah, but yeah, brother Josh is not here, so. But mm-hmm. I, yeah, I know you heard that show though, interracial dating. But uh, Brian, you can go ahead, you can answer the question, or you can reply to that. Go ahead. First of all, I want to tell the sister, she needs to study more. First of all, Abraham wasn't a Hebrew per se, technically. On paper, he was a person who lived in Ur in the. Eastern skirts of Arabia, and I can prove it, and I already proved it when I debated Moshe. He became a Hebrew by name, technically, 10 years after he landed in Canaan. I already showed that document, all right? First of all, I understand that Ishmael, he was in Arabia. Check this out. Seventh-day Adventist Bible Dictionary, list of Arabic tribes in the, the sons of Cush. Genesis chapter 7. The sons of Joktan, Genesis chapter 10, verses 26 to 29. The sons of Keturah, Genesis 25, 1 to 4. And the sons of Ishmael, 25 to 12 to 16. First of all, there were Arabs before Ishmael. Okay? So she need to, um, she was right, but well, technically, on paper, I mean, she was wrong. But I can run all the names. I have all the names here. But I knew where she was getting to. But there were Arabs before Ishmael. Ishmael was taught the Arabic from when he came from the east. He came 
to the north and west, and then he went to Canaan, and then he came to Arabia. His, his, his lineage is Kedar, which Muhammad comes from. And that's all I have to say. All right, Mr. Blanchett. Uh, yes, uh, I, I must agree with I, uh, Brother Rahim on, on that, the uh, the – the Arabs and the, and the the you know and the Shemites or uh, whatever you want to call it and you know those people existed before uh, Ishmael uh, they go all the way back I mean you know uh, they go all the way back as I stated earlier all the way back uh, to the beginning of uh, of humanity back to the beginning of uh, uh, after the flood uh, and 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 even the flood is is is, is spoken on and believed on uh, by Muslims. And Noah and his three sons, and those three sons correspond with the three major races of humanity that exist, and where they uh, uh, where they became indigenous to, where they relocated after the Tower of Babel. The Japhetic people are the Europeans, the Hamitic people are the Africans, and the Shemitic people. Okay, the olive skin or the brown skin, lighter than, than black Africans or brown Africans, but they was, but sometimes they were saying brown skin color, okay, at, at times. And these people intermarried. I'm not sitting up here fussing with anybody about intermarriage. Again, we're talking about the very beginning. Is there a distinction between the three races of humanity that all humanity sprang from? Yes. The Negroid and I'm talking secular knowledge now, the Negroid, the Caucasoid, and the Mongoloid. Okay? This this is this is this is uh this is scholarship, okay? This is academia. This is basics, one on one. Now, and when we look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics on my Facebook page, Black Jesus, one word, minister, and you look at those hieroglyphic pictures of, of the different races, it corresponds exactly the same. You have two Africans, the Nubians, who are the darkest, the jet black. Then you have the brown, who are the Egyptians, with the, which the original Egyptians were all black, because there's another picture where the, where the Egyptian and the Nubian is jet black. And then another picture where the Egyptian is brown and jet black. And then you only have two other races left. We're talking about Egyptian history. They were here way before us, not sitting up here quibbling and quoting like this brother is. Okay, and refusing truth because he wants to inculcate uh, 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 Islam and the Quran as being superior ultimately than the Bible and the Tanakh and the Gospels. Because that's his agenda, folks. We're not going to fall for the okie doke. That's exactly what it is. Okay, yep. and you're looking at the at the Egyptians. They're talking to you, and they're saying the other two races. One is white, and the other is yellow, almost a light color. So the two dark, so the two ask, brown, the black, the two blacks and the brown are African. Hmm. The two light, one European and one uh, 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 yellow, or, or a little bit the darker than the white person. And that is the original Arab, the Afro Asiatics, the Afro Arab, the Afro Arabic. The people who are in yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Black. Just a minute, sir. Hold on, Black. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let Raheem jump in real quick. We have some more callers standing by. Raheem, you can reply briefly. I will let you reply as well briefly, uh, Mr. Blanche. But go ahead, Raheem. You can reply briefly. Go ahead. First of all, the Egyptians. There were people before the Egyptians. You have the barbarians who the Egyptians come from. The Egyptians are a mix. <laughs> Semitic people and Bardarian people, and I have the knowledge on it, and the grave sites they have found from the first cataract to the sixth cataract. So Egyptians were not the first, and Nubia is the Nubian people who basically are the Kushites were before them, and it said they said themselves they come from the south, basically. That's what they said, and it's recorded under the scholars. You can go to Wallace Budge, Herodotus, etc. So, where you come in with that from, um, like, Egypt didn't mix. Egypt was a mixture of cultures also, even in the later period, and even the last three dynasties were Caucasians. That's all I have to say, Sal. All right, Minister Blanche, you can reply briefly. You got more call to stand by. You can reply. Okay. Yes, absolutely. This man knows what he's talking about and don't know what the hell he's talking about at the same time. Wow. Brother. 
the original, uh, it, excuse me, brother, the original Egyptians, even though it wasn't called Egypt at the time, all the southern people, people oh, brother, I didn't interrupt you, all the Nubians, the jet black, beautiful Nubians, dear brother, they are the, they are the ones who established and, 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 and created Egypt, the Nubians. That's why when you look at these pictures here that I have on my Facebook page, the first one of these pictures has two black Nubians, and they're saying one is a, 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 a African and the other is an Egyptian because they were both black and they were the same people, okay? Now, we know all black people are not yet black. They are all kinds of beautiful colors of black. And then the second picture shows a brown Egyptian and the same black Nubian as Egyptian. So it started with the Nubian, and then, yes, the other African people who were lighter than the Nubians came on and formed other dynasties of, of Egypt. But these were, uh, uh, there were no barbarians that started Egypt or no other people. It was the Nubians and the Africans of all colors, but started with the jet black Nubians, sir. And these people called themselves Africans. They didn't sit up here, and you don't see no picture of the white man and the, and the, and the, and the, and the light-skinned uh, Shemitic Arabic-looking Asiatic guy, they didn't say that he's African or he's Nubian or he's Egyptian because they're not African, sir. What part of Afro-Asiatic do you not understand? See, this is the kind of stupidity that we deal with and that I'm dealing with with this man right now. See, his own words, Afro-Asiatic, he kept saying it over, quoting that over and over. Why, why don't you understand that, brother? You know, is ignorance uh, really that uh, hard? <laughs> All right, we got to go to the next caller. <laughs> got a lot of time. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. I know uh, I hear you want to answer that, but hold that thought. We're going to go to the next caller. Again, the number is 646-716-7320. It's all about the people who get answered to your questions. So, again, feel free to call in. Let's press number one. We can add you to the conversation. If you're listening on Skype, let's press number one, and we're going to get to you. I'm just going down in order and taking your questions. Let's go to 661-857. You're live on air. Hey, thank you for taking my call, Sal. Peace and blessings to everyone, and and all praise to the God of the Bible. I just wanted to say that uh, although I am a Christian, <clears throat> I would just like to say that this is a platform where we're exchanging information. We're here to learn and hopefully exercise a little pedagogy in not just understanding the information that's being exchanged, but learning how to conduct ourselves in a more disciplined manner. Now, I would just have to compliment <clears throat> Brother Raheem in his um, composure and his control in his conduct, because to me, I would just say the Brother Minister kind of, uh, in my opinion, hasn't really exercised a lot of discipline in presenting his position. Uh, I do acknowledge that there was some scholarship in the minister's presentation, but I would just like to say that in one of the things the Bible teaches is that more faithful are the wounds of a friend. And so as a brother in Christ, as a brother uh, that's trying to exercise discipline in this walk of faith, <clears throat> I would just like to say that you need to exercise a little more control in one, allowing your opponent to present his answer without making, you know, noises or gestures, because you're not going to defeat his argument by making jokes or making these you know, hilarious comments, and then to attack him in terms of his faith has really nothing to do with the point of argument in terms of what was brought as the point of discussion. So I'll conclude my comment in the next 30 seconds with this, is that uh, Brother Minister, you know, and I appreciate when you told me at the beginning of the show that, you know, a lot of these things you were taught at an early age. And so what I would say to you, as it was said to me, there's a lot of things that we have already concluded in terms of our understanding, but there's so many people listening on this show that haven't been exposed to all of the things that we kind of accept as a matter of fact, as a result of our continual walk in Christ, we need to allow those listeners that haven't reached that point of, of understanding and give them the steps before. Because, for example, I was expecting you guys to talk about uh, Africa, how that 
word came about, Arab, how that word came about, and I got two conflicting definitions, but I'm going to have to do my own research to really determine who act, who exactly won the debate. But I would just say, you know, uh, based on what was presented, I would say that Brother Rahim, in my opinion, won this debate, and that's what I would like to conclude. But I would just also like to uh, just say that we need, as Christian men, to exercise more discipline and self-control because that's one thing our Father commands us to do because on one, one of these days he's going to call us before him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But I would kind of say if you brought this recording to that day of judgment, I'm not sure, Brother uh, uh, Black Jesus, I don't know if Jesus would say well done. He'd probably say, what were you thinking? What were you doing? And I just would just – this, these are constructive terms that I wish and I hope and pray that you meditate on them. And, uh, Brother Sal, I definitely do look forward to uh, being a, an active participant, being one of your guests to debate some issues. As I told you, I think two or three shows before, I have some topics of discussion that I'm pretty sure if you brought them up as an issue of discussion, you wouldn't have any problem bringing somebody to oppose me on these issues. So by all means with that, I would just say, God bless you all, and thank you for letting me uh, present myself on the phone. And this is Brother Gerald of California, just so everybody know who I am. <laughs> God yeah, bless you all. Got thank you, brother. You. Yeah, I'm going to definitely keep in touch with you, man, uh, for season six, though, definitely. But, uh, Minister yeah. Blanche, you can reply. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, brother, uh, I appreciate your sweet comments there, brother, and your spirit of calmness and your spirit of, of peace. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, all of those things are necessary in our walk with God. But also, uh, being a warrior, putting on the full armor of God, dear brother. You don't put on the full armor of God, dear brother, to go kiss and hug somebody, dear brothers and sisters. You put on the full armor of God to defeat, to uh, 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 to 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 go to go to war. Okay. Now, uh, the definition, dear brother, of a complete Christian is found in Ecclesiastes 3. Read Ecclesiastes 3, brother, and stop giving people the false perception that Christianity is a punk, a sissy punk, coward uh, uh, religion, dear brother. It's not just turning the other cheek. The Bible says there's a time to, to, to embrace, a time not to embrace. A time to heal and a time to kill, brother. So I do not apologize for being a warrior in the body of Christ. Now, everybody got their different parts to do with different things to do in the body, but I'm a warrior, brother. So let me go to war on your behalf while you be sweet and kind on the other half when it's time for all of that. Because there's a time to be sweet and there's a time to go to war. As Jesus did, brother, when he walked into the temple and beat the hell out of them fools out of the temple because they made a mockery of God's house. <clears throat> okay? He beat them, brother. He drew blood from their brother. So don't, you know, this little sissy part of Christianity, we got to get off of that. Okay? These, these pastors are making our men, <laughs> our men sissified with this sissy Christianity. Okay? Now. Uh, so I appreciate your comments, brother, but I just want you to think about that. You need to obey the word of God. Be full Christian, Ecclesiastes 3. Okay? Read it, brother. And you notice, y'all, he, you notice that he didn't, he didn't give his vote against me because of what I said. It was because of the way I said it. And, brother, you didn't address Afro-Asiatic because Afro-Asiatic means two people, sir. Think, brother. Stop being nice and think and be right. Do I have an opportunity to rebut? Yeah, you can reply real quick. Yeah, you can reply real quick. I only need need 30 seconds. Apologetics involves in defending the faith, and polemics involves the attack where you are trying to uh, take what the, the opposition is bringing to you as an apologetic, and you you're getting in the face and attacking them for what they are are falling short. The the issue is not Islam and Christianity in this issue because I'm still trying to understand how the Arabs and how the Africans have anything to do with Israel. I mean, we're bringing 
I mean, to me, I, I thought we were going to define what Africa was. I thought we were going to define what Arab was. And I think I got a good gist of it. it it's somewhere uh, a disputed area around the Red Sea. Now, to me, uh, it, an ad hominem attack against Rahim in terms of his faith in Islam, to me, has nothing to do with the topic of discussion tonight. And so I don't think that, you know, for you to make it, as a part of your appeal in terms of uh, strengthening your argument against him, I, I don't think it has any weight and has no bearing. It's a non, it doesn't follow with the discussion tonight. If you want right, to discuss uh, brother, Islam, I, 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 I receive, I receive your words, brother. And uh, so you, you are different cut than, than I am there, brother. No, this, no, this, this, I, I would say, I would say, I would say that I'm just as much a lion as you are. And, and that would be true. Oh, well, Okay, well, okay, well, 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 one of the things that I'm going to devise is a debate between yourself and myself in terms of uh, some issues regarding Christianity that maybe you disagree with. Because here it is, you're telling me that I'm a, I'm a pussy cat and, and I have to disagree. Yes. And, and so maybe maybe we can have a debate on that. I, I sure would well, like to have that. Sounds good, and brother. I sure would like to have that. So, so Sal, Sal, it's a date, and and I'm pretty sure we can flesh out hey, the details hey, before, between. Before, hold on, before, hold on, before you go, brother, do you know what Afro-Asiatic means when you put those two words together? Do you know what that means, brother? Tell us what that means, brother. Well, I believe that he's trying to combine two continents together, the Asian continent with the African continent, which are two separate okay. continents. Now, so do you and do you agree that they are two different people, brother? Afro Asian? Do you do you agree that that's two different people? I don't agree, and the reason why I don't agree is because African was a term that came after Asia. In fact, supposedly the original man was Asiatic. Mm-hmm. So I don't. And, and the thing is, I I can't I can't give you references oh, in Lord. terms of scholars. Okay, brother, 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 you know, brother, I don't I don't want you to embarrass yourself no more. You just said that the original man was Asiatic, brother. It, it's time for you to go, brother. Well, well, uh, brother, like I, I said, as, I, matter, as, matter, as matter of fact, as, as matter of fact, uh, Leaky, brother, you need to do some serious reading. Leaky, uh, the uh, anthropologist, yep. and. Uh, 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 prove that the oldest human remains of Africa, okay. and the whole and the whole planet knows that everybody came from Africa, brother. Very what are you good. talking well, about? Well, well, well very brother, good. Brother, no, you man, you you brother, you appoint me. The Shaw, appoint me to I'm scholarship. Gonna, I appreciate that. Shaw. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you. Yeah, I'm gonna let you reply, Raheem. Go ahead. Yeah, you go fly. What I wanted to do was say to the brother. I think his name is Gerald from California. Yeah. Peace be upon yeah. you and your family. Thank you for the comments. And if I was rude and you would have told me that I'm rude, you know what I would have done? Fall back and shut my mouth. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, hey, brother, stop looking at ice cream, brother. Uh, you, you made yourself look bad talking about here that the original man is Asian, brother. I don't know how you missed that, brother. I don't know how you How old are you, brother? Maybe. You shouldn't be talking about stuff, brunch. You really shouldn't be talking about licking ice cream. That don't really sound, that don't sound too tight, uh, bro. You shouldn't be talking like that, for real. <laughs> All right. Once again, we're going to the people out there. Get the number is 646-716-7320. Again, this is the final show for Season 5 of the Bay Talk for you for the spring season. We're going to come back in the fall, September 11th, Friday, September 11th. So, again, I, you know, I have some debates lined up. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I'm going to just let the first one out. Um, We're going to basically, the first debate I'm going to have is going to be with, between Brother Josh and Lord Ava. So, once again, we're going to have a debate between Brother Josh and Lord Abbott. That's going to go down September 11th. We're just trying to figure out what topic, things of that nature. So, you know, it's going to be a, you know, great debate. And, again, make sure you tune in for Season 6 of Debate Talk for you. But let's go to the next caller. we got a lot of callers standing by. Again, it's the final show. I appreciate everybody that's calling in, listening to the show live. And the show is archived. For those who aren't aware, you can always go back and go check out the archives. But let's go to the next caller. Let's go to Skype caller Piaki. Piaki, what's going on, brother? Welcome to the show. What's going on, man? 
How you doing? How you doing? I was listening to the conversation, and I don't want to get into these arguments, and I don't know why a black minister Jesus is calling this man out of his name. But, uh, it, you know, both of them have said some things that was descriptive. The one brother I, I would give more credit to because of the things that he referred to uh, as far as the people, uh, his references, you know, being uh, mentioned in Isaac Van Sermon and so on and so on, I would have to lean toward him and being legitimacy. Now, getting back to the questions, was the original Arabs African? Well, there wasn't anyone calling themselves African back in those days, but I know what people are talking about. Plus, the land was never the what you call Asia Minor. What was called Asia Minor in the African continent was connected together because there was no Suez Canal. That's right. Now, another thing, according to, and all that land was at that time Kush, which later on would become called Ethiopia, but. Even Homer, and Homer was not one person. Homer was a composite of Arthur. But Herodotus himself said that Ethiopia in ancient times included the Sudan, of course, the present uh, name that we know today as Egypt, including Arabia, Palestine, and so-called Western Asia and India. Now, that can be found in John Jackson's book. The pictures that uh, Black Minister Jesus is talking about is found is is the pictures that's found in Ramesses the third tomb of the twentieth dynasty on the west bank of the of the uh, Nile there in what's called Aswan or better known as the Valley of the Kings in tomb KV seven. Those pictures do not represent the nations of the world. That picture on the left is the general type of the Egyptians. The one in the second picture is the second image is the general type of quote unquote what we now call European. The third picture is the general type of the people that was in the interior of Africa. And the fourth picture is a general type of mixtures which have been come to call as Semitics. Another thing, the languages of Egypt included Berber. Cushitic, Kemitic, and Arabic. Arabic is the only language that's not quote-unquote, as we like to say today, because the Suez Canal has been included there, is not on the, the African continent. It is an African language. The first people of that area would have been the Kushites, black people. Because of mixture, they came into what they are today. The word Arabic means from the indigenous point means inhabitant of the desert this thing about wandering so forth came about from the Greeks which came much much later another point and this is the last thing Afro, uh, Afro-Asiatic language is an attempt to combine the Mesopotamia and Kemetic languages together as a family and that proved to be a total failure that Eden, Eden of the East was created by the Greek that Eden that lies between the Euphrates and the Mesopotamia is not the original Eden. The original Eden, if you want to call where the first human beings came from, and Matt Black Minister did mention this, but that came from the interior around Uganda, around uh, Kilimanjaro, what is known as the foothills of the mountain of the moon. And for a simple reason, where the Euphrates and the Tigris is, is up around the 30 degree latitude. All oh, that land was under ice during the last worm period. Wasn't no human beings surviving under, in that period. So the human beings sprung up out of the central areas of Africa. They took the highway, which is the Nile River, Happy, which flows from the south to the east. They went down river and started to inhabit and occupy the areas that they that they call today the, the Nile Valley. And keep this in mind, what's called the Nile Valley was underwater. It became a land surface after the deposits of silk over the generations after generations after generations. Exactly. That's all I got to say. I agree with him 100%. And another thing, 
I spent eight years over in that area, going in and out of tombs and temples and pyramids all the way down to Wadi, which is at the northern uh, border of the Sudan, and excavating uh, areas that date back over 70,000 years ago. So a whole lot of stuff that people have mentioned today, I mean, it just did not, you just can't take things back into a period of the chronological history of the earth and place them where they just was not. Exactly. The old saying is this, I'm sorry, you cannot miss something that you never had. Gotcha. All right, Black Jesus Minister, you can reply. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, sir, thank you very much, uh, Brother Pianchi from TRS Radio, a regular on TRS in the TRS Carbon Radio family. Um, uh, Brother Pianchi just basically started off confirming what I said about ten times already. In reference to, he went he went right to the Egyptian hieroglyph and gave details on it, and I appreciate that, Brother. I really appreciate that. That's the kind of scholarship what? and brother that we, uh, the, uh, the kind of scholarship that we do have at TRS. Yeah, it gets a little ruckus over there, but we got some intelligent people over there, okay? And uh, and he basically and, and basically he said what I said and confirmed what I said that my oh. opponent just said he agreed with him one hundred percent, okay? One hundred percent to what that brother Pianchi said that what. These pictures of these are uh, a racial general, racial type, the the interior African and the Egyptian, and the interior African and the Egyptian are African. And then the white man who is the European. So now we know that the interior African and the Egyptian is not the Arabian from Arabia. They are in Africa. And the white man is in Europe. So there only needs one person left. This light-skinned, uh, orange-looking, red, or you know, a uh, 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 Semite, Semitic, Arabic brother who is not African. My God, my goodness. Okay, I'm one plus one is two. Okay, brother uh, Pianchi, thank you, brother. And and, and going back to my de- the definition that ends this whole uh, that helps end this debate. On my part, was that uh, 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 was that what uh, the indigenous the Arab or the indigenous Arab is the indigenous name of the people, perhaps literally inhabitants of the desert and related to the Hebrew Abhara desert, meaning homeless, little wanderers, child of the street, but ho- wanderers. Okay, and then it says a member of a Semitic people, originally in originally. Inhabiting Arabia. So how do we get originally in Arabia and originally in Africa? How are you going to do that? And this is just a dictionary definition that you can find just by Googling it because it's the truth, the common knowledge. Inhabiting Arabia and how and who spread throughout the Middle East from Arabia. Let's let uh, Raheem Ali answer those and questions. Africa. That, Raheem, you can answer oh. that. You know what? I don't know if he was listening to Pianchi. First of all, Pianchi went against your definition of Arab. He went against the pictures that you said. I think, could you be quiet, please? He went against most of what you said. The reason why I agreed with him, because I already read in my documents from Warner Dime. The Semitic people came from the center of Africa, which Pianchi said he agreed with me. That's why I said I agree with him 100%. And they went to the Levant. Where is the Levant? An upper part of Arabia on that east side near the uh, Mediterranean. That's why he didn't basically agree with you. You just sat here, listened to him, and then Lied on him. That is crazy. Uh, hold on, P- uh, Piaki is actually still on the line. Piaki, if you want to, you know, get clarity on whose side you're, uh, you know, taking, you can uh, make clarity that I got. Well, as I said, both of them said some things that was true. Both of them said some things that wasn't true. 
the brother, uh, uh, not black minister, the other brother, he made reference to individuals that I know of, Van Serman and, and some others, and the things that they said, you know, it has been, is, I mean, it's, it's there. Uh, black minister made mention that, though, and you know, by the way, you go into KV uh, 11, go into KV 17, some of those tombs have uh, those pictures of individuals coming from different parts of the world. Some of them may have six, eight, up to 12 individuals. So the one that you're talking about is just those four that's found in the tomb of Ramesses III, who comes hailed from the 20th dynasty. Exactly. Ask, ask, the, ask, brother, before you go on, I ask you one question. Explain yes. to us what is Kusha Dweeper is. If you, I, I'm sure you know what Kusha Dweeper is. Kusha Duba? Dweeper. No, no, I don't know everything, brother. Explain it oh, to me. I thought you, okay. Yeah, Kusha, did, well, Clyde Winters and uh, Drusilla uh, Dungy Houston. Drusilla Dungy Houston, yes. Right, right. Uh, they, they knew Kusha Dweeper when they went over and was called uh, Kish over in, uh, more like in Persia, and it was known as Kusha Dweeper, and those people were related to as Arabs as I have presented in my um my presentation. <laughs> Okay. Now let me say this one thing And I gotta go okay. The Kushites fought off both Christianity They fought off Alexander They mm-hmm. fought off Justinian Matter of fact it's a good story about The uh, Kushites And the uh, Kandaki it was a Kandaki queen I don't know what her name is I can't remember But she fought off Alexander and Justinian Well she fought off Justinian for real and she gave him an opportunity to meet her on the island, what's now called Crete. Right. She sent her, she sent some of her warriors, and they gave Justinian a handful of golden tip arrows. Arrows, and she told the message that she sent that this is a gesture of peace. But if you don't want peace, you're going to need these arrows. And they also fought off the invasion of Islam, or should I say, Mohammedism at that time as it tried to penetrate into the, you can call it the central areas, uh, southern areas of Ethiopia. They fought off Christianity. They fought off Islam for nearly a thousand years. They didn't want to have anything to do with either one. All right. All right, guys, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, once again, we're live on the air, guys. Let's let you guys know. If you're listening on social media and uh, you're checking out the Bay Talk View right now, we have only like eight minutes on the air, guys. What that means is once the eight minutes is up, the only way you can hear the rest of the show is by calling the number 646-716-7320. So before the eight minutes is up, I highly recommend that you uh, call in. Again, this is the last show for Season 5 of the Bait Talk Radio. We want to hear from you guys, and uh, we're taking questions, and more, you know, more questions and comments right now, and we still have the final statement part of this show, of this debate. So, again, we want to hear from you guys, 646-716-7320. I actually have a question in the chat room right about now for Raheem. Let me read this question now to you. It says, is there any accredited maps I can view where Arabia was ever part of Africa? Every map I see, Arabia has always been of Asia. You can answer that question, Ryan. Okay. Um, if that person wants to get in contact with me, um, I have maps showing that Arabia is on both sides of the Red Sea and on both sides of the Nile, and I can I have more than one. I have um, yes. So there are maps. What you're looking at today is the political cartographers, those European Caucasians who made up boundaries, like the brother Pianchi said, there, there wasn't really a boundary for, for African people. They didn't have these boundaries that you see. And like you have Libya, Chad, or, uh, Kenya, and all these boundaries. We were like one people. We had our territories, but we didn't do that. So what you see today is a misnomer and from Europeans. And I have, I do have the maps. You can email me at Raheem4411 at gmail.com, and I will send you those maps. 
All right, guys, so we have like six minutes on the air now. Again, you have to call in before the time runs out to hear the rest of the show. Or if you happen not to call in, you can go check out the archives. Make sure you go to the website, www.blogtalkradio.com, forward slash debate talk for you. But we want to hear from you, the listening audience out there. And we have more callers there than by pressing number one. So we're going to go to the phone lines once again. And then we still have a final statement part of this debate. But let's go to the phone line. Let's go to 314 680. You're live in there. What's up, what's up, it's the Consciousness. I just want to say peace to everybody, peace to Brother Sal, Raheem, and uh, 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 George Black. Um, I think that, what's going on, I think furthermore that um, it was some great information that was uh, in this debate that was delivered uh, uh, for the most part, but I have to say that uh, Raheem edged it, even though I disagree with a lot of stuff that he said, you know, um, and I think it came from a biased perspective or whatever. But I want to say this. Um, um, I got a, a question for Raheem. Um, how do you how do you actually prove um, that uh, everybody came from out of Africa? Like, how, how do you prove that? We we know it's a theory, but how how do you prove that? Yeah. Oh my God. How do you prove that everyone came from Africa? Yes, Lord. But they, they are. They have already proven that people from Asia, even Caucasian, with the DNA sample, uh, mitochondria DNA. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, they have already proved that everybody comes from Africa. So, an African, so the first man on the screen. Is African. So that's that's how you. Okay, you would have to have you would have to have some type of what organisms or some type of uh, uh your DNA mitochondrial DNA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so so mm-hmm. uh, you would have to have a, a, a ancient some historical uh, data, right? Some historical history for that, right? Well, when you deal, you could deal with history. You could deal with the linguistics. Uh, cultural. Story. Well, we're talking. We're talking about DNA right now. Well, when you talk about oh, DNA, oh, you have oh, to have some type of. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. To have, okay. Yeah. What, is, what is that? What is that? What is what is that evidence? Where is it at? Well, I would have to email it to you because when you're dealing with mitochondria, you're talking about basically the side of the woman. She she carries the mitochondria DNA, so that's what they did. Um, but what, what I, woman did? Hold on. What woman did they have to get this DNA from? That's what it was I'm a, I asked you. It's an African woman. I would have to. And where is she at? Where Where is she at? Where is she at? That's what I'm trying to ask you. Like, where is she okay. at? What are she, we? I mean, she's in the. She She would be in the area of like Kenya, just like like. Where, listen, kid. this is what I'm asking you for. I'm asking you for tangible evidence. I need okay. to know where is this woman at, and what do we use for tangible evidence? Can I step in with the information? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't need you to step in. I, I want him to yeah, ask man, me. Yeah, man, man, I asked you about four or five times, brother. You ain't getting there. All right, well, go ahead. Go ahead. And I want to respond to that after you after you, you answer. Uh, well, brother, Lucy is that specimen that they found in Africa, brother, the oldest human remains. You can look up Lucy and Leaky. The anthropologist L E A K Y, mm-hmm. uh, and then also, dear brother, you can go to go to YouTube and look up the genetic doc, scientific documentary on YouTube that is called "The Journey of Man," and it will so, show you the, the, the genetic proof that the scientists have proven by genetics that the oldest human beings are the Pygmy Twa people. Came out of Africa. So what, and what is the, what is the oldest? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said Lucy, right? That's what you said, Lucy, right? So is Lucy yes, the oldest yes, bones that they found, right? Is that what you're telling yes, me? No, the, the, the oldest, no, no, sir. The oldest human remain that they they consider to be a link to humanoids. Okay, the humans. There are different other kinds of humanoids. I, 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 so, so, but so, so, Lucy hold on. is supposed to be the, the oldest let, let, human. Uh, closely related to humans, brother. Supposedly. So, 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 so hold on. So hold on, Rah- Raheem. Do you agree with him? No. All right, so let me let me bring this out real quick because I'm gonna tell y'all something. The out of Africa theory is was made by the Caucasians to prove uh uh the ape theory. 
evolution. It's oh, the second my lion. God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me speak, let me speak, bro. Let me speak. If you think I'm lying, you can research it. It started in the, from the 17th to the 1900s. You cannot, listen, you cannot do any type of mitochondrial DNA or any of that if you do not have a geologic column. Okay, Luan, 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 hold on, Luan, Luan, hold on, hold on, Luan, tell us, then you tell us where are the oldest people made there. No, no, brother, tell us, you tell us, where are they? Let me tell you, let me tell you. No, you said it's a lie, you said the white man's lie, I told you, hold on, man, you got to let him speak, brother, all that, you got to let him speak, man, let him speak, bro. Let me tell you, don't be anxious to get killed, don't be anxious to die. All right, we're here. There it is, hit the lie, hit the lie for me, uh-uh. Now, here's the thing. We got two brothers that's pe- preaching black supremacy science, pseudoscience. Hey, and I'm, I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to bring it out, though. Let me bring it out. Let me bring it out, though. Now, watch this. You have, to, you, you, have have this ge- you have to have a geologic column to say what Brother Raheem said and what you said dealing with bones. It takes historical data, right? So Raheem couldn't prove it to me, but you tried. You came with Lucy. I want y'all to look up Lucy and watch how this heifer, led, head, well, how this, led, this, this, this supposed to be uh, 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 where we evolved from, man, where man evolved from, I want y'all to show and look how she was found. Her legs and body was found a mile away, down and deeper from the rest of the part of her body. This is a problem. But we take this science, and it's pseudoscience, because it has no historical data. I mean, the historical data cannot be tested or repeated, and we use this in debates. The whole, the outer Africa theory was put forth to disprove that the black man and not and all other races came uh, did not come up out of Asia because the Bible supports that. That's the first thing. The Asia the black man is the Asiatic. Afro Semitic means that in those areas they spoke in that area a uh, Afro uh, 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 language of Afro a uh, Hamite and a Semitic language. That language came up out of out of the Middle East. And with that being said, I want Raheem to please show me how he got what he got. And uh, this brother tried with some pseudoscience, with some age stuff, but that's not going to work for me, brother. And uh, I'm out. Peace out. Peace to everybody else. All right. Thanks for the call, Raheem. Go ahead. You're going you're gonna, to uh, reply. I ain't got nothing to say. He, he got his own mind made up. I already gave him the info. <laughs> his mind made up. <laughs> Even, even I like you. you know? I yeah, Laron, Laron, brother, you are such a coon, brother. And I ain't got no problem calling <laughs> you a coon, brother. You are a super coon. <laughs> you want to try and prove that black people are not the original Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites? You want to try and prove that black people are not the original people because you love white people? You are a coon, nigga. You do okay? agree. Minister now, uh, 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 excuse me, yeah, 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 so anyway, uh, brother, easy, easy, though. Uh, I'm, and I'm sorry about that, Sam, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but hold on, hold on, but my point is, brother, now, all you need to do, uh, uh, LaRon, with your stupid butt, okay, is no, the oldest, is the oldest bones of all human remains are in Africa, whether you, you believe in Lucy or not, brother, I'm not, I, I'm not rolling with uh, evolution, brother. Okay, and the last thing I, and the last thing I told you was stupid behind was that what? Go and look on YouTube and watch the genetics, genetics, brother. Scientists prove that black Africa is the, is where the original man came from by genetics called exactly. the journey of man. Go watch it, brother. Sit your dumb butt down. Go watch it and shut the hell up. I do agree with Minister Blunt that the the first people are African. You're not going to take that away from me. We may have different um, methods of saying it, but I agree with him 100,000 million percent that our people were the first people on this planet, and that's it. That man's sick. Thank you, Raheem. 
All right, let's go to the next caller. Again, you know that number, 646-716-7320. And after that, we're going to go to the final statement part of the show and pretty much wrap it up. Let's go to 215-954. You're live in the air. Peace, peace, family. This is Olamai. What's going on, y'all? Peace, brother. It's Olamai. Yeah, yeah. I'm, what's going on? What's going on, uh, Mr. Blanche? What's going on, Raheem? Yeah, I was gonna, uh, I'm not going to really judge the debate. Because I, I, I didn't listen to the whole debate. I just caught on to certain things that uh, people was building off of. I, I caught both of the final, uh, not the final statements, but the uh, rebuttals. And, um, yeah, yeah, Afro-Asiatic is a term that is used, you know, um, to make reference to the fact, like what Brother Rahim was saying, that um, originally people in that particular region, you know, come from, you know, Africa, descendants of Ethiopia, and Priscilla Dungey Houston, and her book, you know, she documents that uh, Ethiopian, wonderful Ethiopian, the Kushite Empire. Exactly. Like you said, you know, um, you know, read the works of Cloud Winners. You know, uh, he deals with, you know, um, you know, African presence. You know, um, and like, uh, you know, another thing we got to understand is that we live in a um, neo-colonial world. Whereas though he he terms such as the Middle East, you know what I mean? You know, um, like he said, the Suez Canal, you know, uh, did not exist at that time. Exactly. Um, in antiquity, the um, you know, the fact that you know this Asian, I mean, what do you refer to as Asian? It's kind of like, um, if you want to go in a classification of quote unquote races or ethnicities, that is kind of like you know scattered from Arabia to a Chinese person. You know what I mean? Right. All of you know what I mean, an Indian and that don't have no similarities as far as phenotype. Right. So we know that, you know, it's kind of a blur, you know what I'm saying? Um Elijah Muhammad said at one point in time the whole world was called Asia. Exactly. You know, so he say, uh, you know, this is where you get the term Asiatic. It's not talking about what we currently look at as Asia. Exactly. Like, you know, Asiatic was referring to the entire world. So, you know, um, you know, I'm a, uh, I can't make a decision who won a debate because I didn't listen to the whole debate. Um, you know, as far as with the evolution, and you know, even though he's a fucking, I, oh my bad, I put him wrong first. Even though he, he uh, sometimes he'd be an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Laron is right about that whole thing with the, uh, you know, the Lucy bones. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They kind of, kind of, you know, you know, puzzle that thing together because you know, the thing about it is that you know they wanted they wanted to make Lucy into, um, you know, this uh, early human, and the thing was that you know they had to prove that it could walk uh, on its on its two feet as opposed to on all fours, so they had to find bones that could compensate that. You know, to, to show that it was like a, a bilateral being, whereas though it could walk on two. And there's a certain way that our bones are structured, whereas though it could prove that. And I think that they, that's why they had to go like, you know, certain miles away to find those bones to kind of, you know, um, piece together, you know, certain things. So, you know, um, he's right about that. I do believe, however, that, you know, a life originated out of Africa. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that that theory of evolution, as what he said, was, you know, to prove, you know, um, their theory of evolution, which mm-hmm. is a form of uh, white supremacy. Because they suggesting that, you know, man, as he begins to evolve, you know, um, that, you know, uh, they became better over time from an ape to a human, et cetera. And he's saying that he is the modern man. Mm-hmm. The European is the later man. So that right. is trying to suggest that, you know, okay, you was original, uh, like this down in Africa, but you were some ape type of being. And then mm-hmm. once you begin to evolve into eventually what we see as the white man, he is trying to suggest that, I guess, I admit that I'm the later man, but I'm the more evolved man, and I'm the more advanced man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what he's trying to prove with that. But, you know, uh, that's all I really got out of the, uh, you know, I didn't listen to the whole thing, like I said. But it was a good build, you know what I'm saying? Hey, appreciate the input, man. Uh, anybody want to reply? Uh, Black Jesus Minister, you want to reply? Got 
Uh, Brother Solomon, thank you for chiming in and 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 being a a, a light beaming uh, example, along with Brother uh, 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 Pianti, that we got some uh, intelligent brothers over at TRS Carbon Radio. Even though I'm, I, I, I'm I, 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 even though I lost count, Sal, I, 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 the last time I counted, it was two and zero, oh, and I did lose to one of your champions, uh, Mikael Ben Israel, uh, during the Super Challenge of uh, TRS Carbon Radio versus DT for You. Uh, what, what's the count now, Sal? Did, y- did y'all finalize that? Yeah, we waiting for your boy uh, Supreme man to make another one more debate <laughs> to get it uh well, well, we're still two and zero right now. We're still two and zero well, right it, now. It, it, well, it, it, well if, if it's one more debate, then then y'all pretty much got it, there, brother. And 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 I'm not mad at y'all because, as a matter of fact, you know uh, one one side of me is glad because DTPU twenty four seven three hundred sixty five days a week, uh, is doing the work of God the Most High. And 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 ministering and 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 teaching uh, our people, and brother, I tip my hat off to you. But uh, th- but next year, dear brother, I'm coming. <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get we got to we're gonna have to try to uh, take that title back from y'all, brother. All right, you want to reply before we move on to the next person? Right. Yeah. Um. Basically, I appreciate the brother um being honest and listening to the whole thing, and. Him telling the the story about the bones. Um, there are older bones that Africans found that are older than Lucy. If people would uh, study, I have studying on that. They have found um, faces of children that's older than Lucy. So, you know, um, I thank I thank the brother for for sharing that because he was calm, cool, and collective. And he he gave he, he he let everything simmer into you know one thing. Like I don't hate lunch. It was this is what we do. I mean, listen, it's a debate, so you know we got we can't come on and you know be uh, like pacifying our mouth or whatever. But it's a debate. But in the end, I do agree. And I'm saying it on record with Minister Blunch, the original man comes up out of Africa. However, scheme of mode you may think it is, the, the the factual part is nonetheless the original man is from Africa and the Caucasian man. Notice I ain't say white. The Caucasian man knows this. All right, once again, guys, we're going to go to a few more callers. I only see um, one more at person that pressed number one. Everybody else is standing by and uh, listening to the show. Again, if you have any uh, comments or any questions, you know that number, 646-716-7320, or just press number one and we can add you in. Other than that, we're going to go to the final statements. Uh, so we have one more caller at press number one. Let's go to that caller. Let's go to 443801. You're live on air. It's John Setti. Peace to the panel. What's popping with the population? I've heard some, um, I've chimed in kind of later on the debate. I had technical difficulties over here with the cell phone. My signal was fading in and out. But what I did hear, right, um, and to me it's kind of hard. The, the, the waters is a bit murky to me because when you use terms like Arab, I, I don't know exactly when that word was used to describe a certain people because I, someone pulled the scripture about uh, Ishmael the time when Ishmael was being used, I know that was a, a, a mixture between Egyptian and um, and Hebrew, right? And so they weren't calling themselves errors back, errors back then. And the concept of evolution or what I call evolution, because that was one place in the Bible when you seen man wanted to evolve and become more than what they were. And the Bible actually do back uh, evol- evolution to a degree because those who believe, but they don't, it doesn't use the term. Evolution and evolution to actually use transformation, so it backs it to a you know to a degree when it says that we will become more those who believe we will have light bodies or become angels or whatever you want to use. But going back to uh the the, the topic, right? I would need to know at what period were the when the genes mutated were they called Arabs and you know, how did it go from Ishmael like to uh to error because genes when you look at the Y chromosome the Y chromosome they mutated over time from um from my research, right? So if and if and when this mutation happened, 
you know, you have Europeans, you have a lot of other races, but they are no longer called Africans anymore. And even they they say that African Americans also have mutated genes. And um, but I hate to burst anybody bubble on that, but for those who back the evolution theory, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Me personally. Uh, I had mixed emotions about that, but I just want to know what period were they called Arabs? The word Arab, the, the word Arab is an old word called Arabi. It's an ancient word. This is before Ishmael. If you send me an email, I will send you the information. This word was before Ishmael Ish, and, and uh, Abraham. As a matter of fact, in my other debate, I showed and proved, and I have the documentation here, that Abraham was not a Hebrew. He became a Hebrew when the people outside his neighbors called him a Hebrew. He was called a Hebrew 10 years later when he got into Canaan. I have the information here. He was living in Arabia near the Tigris rivers. I already proved that Arabia stretched from Egypt all the way back, all the way to India. Even Herodotus 450 B.C. He was an eyewitness to this, this knowledge, and he was over there. So other scholars, like uh, from Babylon, Timbuktu, uh, Drusilla, Houston, um, Finch, Clark, Dr. Ben, Auntie Diop, they will they will give you all that knowledge. But if you email me at Raheem four four one one at gmail dot com, I'll send you the name, I'll send you the dictionary where it comes from, I'll send you the Arabic and break it down for you, and then you can take it to a scholar. Go to a scholar and you will see that I'm right. Someone who can read Arabic. Okay? And then you can break it down yourself and you'll see where the term Arabic Arabia come from. It wasn't called Arabia. It was called Arabi. It's A R I B I, and it just people couldn't pronounce it, so it's Arabia. Arabia. It, so okay, it's, it's I'll, I'll Arabia. What is, what is it again? Raheem four one one. Uh, Raheem four four one one at gmail dot com. Let uh when you write me, say um I need the information about the word Arabian. I know exactly who you are. Okay. Black Jesus, you group up. Uh yeah. Uh, uh Brother Rahim also stated that uh he was looking for a map that he has uh where uh Arabia is called Africa. Okay. Uh, no, no, brother, I have, I have a map. I have a map uh-huh. maps that has okay, okay. you have a map. No, you, you map. have a map. You, you no, did I hear you quickly? You have a map that says no, that map. Arabia is Africa, right? Arabia is part of Africa. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, I got you. So, so it, on that map, it says that Arabia is Africa, right? Yeah, I have, I have maps with an X. Okay, now, okay, now, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Now, give us a number, a percentage out of all the maps that you've seen. Uh, what percentage of maps that you've that you've studied that says that uh, Arabia was Africa, brother? I said Arabia is part of Africa. Arabia is not the whole Africa. It's part of Africa. I okay, have, okay. I have the so, whole so, what is, so, what, so when you're looking at your map, it, where Arabia stands, it's going to say it's, it's going to say Africa, right? Is that what you're no, saying? It's going to say Arabia on Arabia, and then Arabia in the Mount Sinai, and then Arabia in on in, where Egypt is. And in your own Bible, it says Mount Sinai is Arabia. So I have those maps. I have more than one map. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, well, brother, when you when you when you send that map to the to the person that you promised to send that to, please send me a copy of that. Oh no, uh, problem. no problem. Yeah, yeah. Send me a, send me a copy of that. And uh, but uh, but but brother, you know, uh, we we got to stop playing word games because and, and be completely honest, brother, and just keep it real. Semitic does not just Semitic is not exclusive to Arab. I didn't say that. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on brother. I, I know, I know you haven't said it, but you've been kind of saying it indirectly. And, 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 and Semitic refers to Africans and and Arabs, the people who are Asians. Okay. 
gave the documentation this, that when I was in doing my presentation. I said that. I even said it with oh, my okay, own. Okay, 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 brother. Okay, okay. But then, okay. So now, so we agree that semantic is it, 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 it uh, refers to uh, uh, the Asiatics and the Africans, as as your quote said, the Afro Asiatic people. And in the Bible, it says Ham and Sham. Okay, we know them to be Ham and Sham. Now you may say that you may say that the Arabs are, are, are ham, and I say that they are not. I say that the, that the that the Arabs are sham. Now that's my point of view, brother. Now, but that's uh, my point. Uh, so so so, and, and that the Levant region, the Levant region, uh, the uh, 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 um, was a combination of two people uh, 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 of nation land people living together and, 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 and intermingling with each other. That was the meeting point between Arabia and Africa, the Levant region. Okay, so I mean, you know, so so uh, these people were mixing, brother. But at some point in time, uh, uh, there, there's a separation. Now you're saying that Arabia is Africa, but in, in what the information that I'm reading, it's saying that Arabia is named after the Arab people, and that Arabia is the indigenous, the indigenous, the indigenous land of Africa. But you're trying to say that you got a map that says that Arabia is Africa. Okay, so that's the problem, brother. No, no, let me talk. Yeah, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me let Raheem reply because we got, we got to run out of time. Bad, Raheem. In my presentation, I gave enough scholars. See, I ain't talking myself. I got the scholars who went over there. See how Pianchi was over there? These scholars was over there. They said, and the Africans are the same people. They are the same kin. They are the same people. And if we know, me and you already agree on, that Africans left up out of Africa, Arabia is part of Africa. It's just another room, just like Chad is a room in Africa. But what what I'm going on is the ancient antiquity. You're based on this modern European paradigm um, of boundaries and so forth. You're stuck on that. And I already proved with two scholarships that the Semitic people were in the heart of Africa and they um, migrated out into Arabia. You see, 9,000, over 9,000 years ago. So I'm saying what I said, and you're agreeing, but, but it's like you're trying to attack me for no reason. This is what I've been saying. This is what the debate is about. And that's all I have to say, Sal. Go to the next caller. All right, guys, we got to pretty much uh, wrap it up very soon. But I just want to take this time out to thank all the listeners out there that's been uh, checking out the Bait Talk View from Season 1 all up to Season 5, all the dedicated listeners all across the globe. Uh, of course, I want to thank all the special guests that's been on the platform, everybody that's been here, you know, uh, bringing out information. And a lot of people have been emailing me saying that the information has helped them tremendously. And a lot of people do a lot of research and things of that nature, especially the people that have been emailing me, too. I want to thank all you guys that emailed me and uh, always want me to do certain shows for you guys. It's all about the people out there, and I try my best to do things for the people out there. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys are satisfied with what the Bay Talk View has brought so far to you guys. But we're going to pretty much uh, go to the final statements very soon. I think I have one more question. Uh, let me read it out. Yeah, uh, it's a question in the chat room, actually. It says, um, do you know that the Earth was possibly one landmass till after the flood? When you look at the maps, it looks like a puzzle pulled apart. But Noah and the Ark landed on Mount Ararat, which is in Turkey. Can you explain the migration from Turkey? All right, so uh, I guess let me go to Raheem and see if you can answer that question. Uh, you got well, the 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 Earth being one is what they're probably talking about as Pangaea or uh, Pangaea before the Jurassic. Um, stage of the earth and um, the migration from Noah what Noah had with his sons out of and they spread like Shem populated basically 80% of the earth okay from biblical sources this is coming this ain't even coming from Islamic sources it's coming from biblical sources so um 
they migrated just like Abraham migrated from east side of Arabia, and then he came over all the way to the Mediterranean side of Arabia. He went to he came to Canaan, went to Egypt, went back to Canaan. He went to Aleppo, Haran, and so forth. So all they did, if it's going by a biblical source, that Ararat, and when they migrated, they just left from there and came down. They split apart came down into Africa, then they split apart. Some people migrated back. We have migrations coming back, migrations coming back. That's all we did, you know what I'm saying? So that takes care of that part. But the first, the, the what they call as the one land before the continental drift would be the world uh, Pangaea. Uh, Black Jesus, minister, you want to reply? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, that's an excellent point. I wanted to say to the other person who called earlier and then asked Brother Raheem about on what map does it state that in, uh, that um, Arabia is Africa? He said he's got to go look for it, so we waiting on that. Yeah. All maps state that Arabia is, is, is Asia. And after the flood, after the flood, if you can look, you can Google any table of nations, table of nations regarding Noah and his three sons. Ham migrated from Turkey to Africa. And Japheth, the Europeans, migrated to Europe. And the Arabs, okay, in, in Arabia, the indigenous people of, of, of Arabia, are the descendants of Sham. And they uh, 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 migrated to Arabia, named after them, after their kind. And when you look at Genesis 10, verse 22, it says the children of Sham were Elam, Asher, Archfad, and Lud, and Aram. And you'll see all these names on that table of nations, uh, 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 Google that search that you'll find. And now I'm going to skip. And then it says, uh, and then it says, uh, and verse 25, and unto Eber, well, some people say E-B-E-R is the beginning of the word Hebrew, possibly. We're born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days, for in his days was the earth divided, verse 25. So the earth divided here in verse 25. So before that time, the earth was Pangea, as my brother stated, uh, my opponent, uh, uh, Brother Raheem stated, that the earth was at one time one last mass, one land mass. And that division of the earth occur, occurred right here at Genesis 25 was the earth divided and, uh, uh, during that time at verse 25. So, uh, yeah, uh, always keep it in mind. Don't let no one tell you that the, uh, that the, uh, that the ark is a, is a fable. Uh, you can go on YouTube and see uh, 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 the ark and, and where it has been found uh, on the, on the uh, mountains of Ararat, and there is a national park. Uh, there, and you can see the discovery by Mr. John Wyatt, and and it's recognized by the government uh, all over the world, and you can actually go there and see the ark, the the remnants of the ark. Exactly where the Bible said. Yeah, I apologize, Black Jesus Minister. Uh, We kind of went out of time, but once again, I appreciate everybody out there. I'm getting a lot of uh, comments and things of that nature of support on social media. Appreciate the love out there. Uh, Debate Talk for you. And if you're unaware, this is the season finale tonight for season five of Debate Talk for you. We're going to come back on the air um, Friday, September 11th. Friday, September 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Like I said, I'm going to have a show on Blog Talk called The The Showtime Report. Well, I'm going to be doing some interviews, things of that nature. I'm also working on some other projects, um, what's your status, things of that nature on YouTube. So i got a lot of different things going on. But we'll definitely be back on the air uh, September 11th, Friday. So we're going to go to the final statement part of the show. And, again, if you want to send your audio shout-outs, you can send them into debatetalkview at gmail.com. We're going to be collecting all your audio shout-outs for next season. And, again, if you want to have any advertisements uh, played on this forum, uh, send me an email, debatetalkview at gmail.com, and uh, looking forward to hearing from the people out there. So let's go to the final statements. Let's go to Raheem Ali for his final statements. You can go ahead, brother. I'd like to say peace to all the callers and the emailers out there. Peace to uh, Minister Blanche and Brother Sal for, um, you know, this debate. Um, I have the maps here, and I've displayed them inside the debate. I don't know why he said 
I got to go get them. I'm, I'm looking at the Herodotus map. You can go to www.mlahanas.de slash Greeks slash bios slash Herodotus map, and it shows Arabia. The name is in, in Arabia. Then I have also the Arabian uh, world idea of Herodotus from the Seventh Day Adventist Bible Dictionary. It's on both sides of the Nile, stretching in Arabia, going back to Persia, Media, and to India. We're talking about the Vedoids. We're talking about the Mahra Arabs and so forth. These are the darkest people on the planet. Okay. Then I said in my book, Discoveries in Egypt, Ethiopia, and the peninsula of Sinai, it shows on a map Arabia on the other side of the Red Sea next to the Nile. I'm looking dead at it. So my maps are here. I don't, I don't know where you got that from. But anyway, let me go to my closing statements. I just wanted to uh, put that out there for everyone. So, you know, if you want these maps, just hit me up. Um, this is what I have to say. Um, Dana Reynolds, again, golden age of the Moor, says in the introduction, most of us are not aware of the peoples whom the classical Greek and Roman historians called Berber were black and affiliated with then contemporary peoples of East Africa, African area. The Berber, in fact, was used to refer to peoples of the Red Sea area in Africa as well as North African. Similarity, there was an ancient belief that the nomads dwelling in some latitudes in the desert of Arabia were peoples of whose ancestry had in time far distant roamed the deserts of East Africa. It was such populations that in large measure comprised the Moorish people who are the dark Muslims, but because of the attribute of blackness, which sharply distinguished them from the bulk of the European people, the word came to be generally used by Europeans to describe persons of black complexion in general. They came before Columbus. Van Sertima, page 234, another scholar. May he rest in peace. In his book, is talking about a man at sea. This is what the man says. Allah, be praised. The mercy of God on those who magnify him for a gentle and favorable wind began to blow at last over the vast pool. So watch what it says. Thus would an Arab African sailor, if he had kept a log, have written of some of his adventures on the high seas. This is Ivan Van Sertima talking about. He's calling him an Arab African. Not me, not Raheem. That ain't me. You can go to that book, page 234. And I know the conscious community have to have that book. Psychic Trauma by Naima Latif, page 45 and 46, says, here, the term Asian must be clarified. During this period, as maps of the time show, the area now called Asia was actually um, considered part of Africa. Europeans later redrew the boundaries, see? They redrew the boundaries for their white supremacy. I do agree with that. And used terms such as Middle East. Middle East didn't exist. A man named Alfred Mahon, who was a general in Second World War, a strategist, made that name up, and it became that, Middle East. It's no such thing. It's a mis misnomer. Just like basically Africa is. The last legal name that Africa really is is Akli Balan. Africa was the northern part of a small part of, of what is called Africa, Carthage. That was called Africa. Okay? Then it says, according to Thorndike, Barnhart, Advanced Dictionary, Arabia is defined as a large peninsula in Southwest Asia, which now includes Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Southern Yemen, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and the Union of Arab Iraq. However, in ancient times, see, all of these lands were considered part of the old empire of North Africa. See? Seven African Arabians, wonders of the world. And I know that's brother, that's a bad brother. Khalid Abdullah Tariq 
Almansur. He's been over in the lands. He was a lawyer for the OPEC oil. I know him personally. He says on page 222, the Arab languages are connected to the languages of East Africa and the Hottentots, the Sans of South Africa, the earliest inhabitants of the Middle East and North Africa, India, and Asia were black Africans. Golden age of the Moor, Ivan Van Sertima, Mamadou Chilady, Africans in the birth and expansion of Islam says, when Muhammad, watch this, the African cops no doubt saw the African Muslims from Arabia as lib- liberator after all they were kith and kin. African Muslims. Okay? In seven African Arabian wonders of, of the world, he talks about, Muhammad says, do not hurt the cops, for they are kith and kin. Because he's related to that line of Abraham. Okay? So with that, Sal, I say peace to Brother Blanche. And it was we didn't agree, but there's no beef. And I'd like to thank you, brother, for having me on to display the uh, scholarship and help people to understand even further if they contact me. A lot of people are contacting me now from other debates, and I have no problem sharing my information. Peace, Sal. Yeah, man. Once again, it's an honor to uh, have you on the, on the panel, brother. I appreciate you uh, coming on, helping this to be another classic. You know what I mean? Debate talk for you. All right, so we're going to go to Black Jesus Minister Blanche, who's a champion at TRS Carbon Radio. And I want to thank him once again for coming on Debate Talk for you and making this finale happen tonight. But uh, let's hear his final statements. Go ahead. Uh, to all the Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters who believe in the Bible and Christians who believe in the Bible, uh, many of you agree that uh, Abraham was not an African, that Abraham was not an African, but our brother, who my, my opponent today, agrees that he is from Arabia, and therefore if he is from Arabia – and if Abra, Abram, uh, who was later called Abraham, was an Arab, he, and he was not an African, a descendant of, of Ham, a Hamitic. He was a Shemitic. Okay? Two different people. And you all heard my brother going on again with more quotes. Now, his quotes are dealing with the middle of history. I'm talking about the beginning of history after the flood, right after the flood, okay? You're not, you're not going to get a homogeneous people thousands of years after the flood because every people were interacting and mixing with each other. I'm pretty sure there might have been some white Africans somewhere and some black Europeans, and there were. There were black people in Europe. So we're going to sit up here and say that what? Oh, uh, black people are the first white people? Are the first white people? That's ignorance, isn't it? That's silliness, ain't it? Okay? Now, uh, so my brother, all of his quotes is talking about the middle of history when people intermingled cultures, intermingled races, and intermarried one another. Of course, you got everything of everything because people were mixing on the planet. Okay? So I'm not, I'm not saying that there were not, this debate is not, were there black Arabs? That would be asinine to sit up there and take that debate, okay? The, the, the debate is, are the Arabs the original, originally black? So we're talking about at the beginning, which is directly after the flood, which directly ties to the three sons of Noah, Ham, Sham, and the Fed, who are the progenitors of the Negroid, uh, 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 of, of the Negroid, the Caucasoid, and the Mongoloid, three distinct races of people. And who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe uh, the middle, later history quotes from scholars who just recently died in the last maybe 100 years or whatever, recently? Or are we going to believe the ancient Egyptians who communicated the different types, the general types of humanity, as I have posted on my Facebook page, Black Jesus, one word, Minister, one word. I have four different pictures here, 
and the black individual in these uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs is Nubian. The brown skin or the other black, whichever picture you're looking at, is is an Egyptian, and they are African. Let's play let's play a, 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 the, the elimination game. So you got to eliminate the, the Nubian African because they're in Nubian, they're African, and you got to eliminate uh, eliminate the brown skinned African, the the Mizram Egyptian, because he's African, he's Egyptian, okay? Who we gonna believe? And then the only two people you got left is the European and the Asiatic. So we know that the European is not who Rahim is talking about. So the the only one left is this Asiatic brother right here. Look at it. This is Egypt talking to us in 2015. Are we going to believe people who just recently went over there, recent scholars, even Herodotus, Greek scholars, or are we going to listen to the Egyptians who were the scholars of scholars, who taught Greek the, the Greek people how to be scholars and, and taught them language and writing and arithmetic, okay, the sciences. Who are we going to believe? Process of elimination and common sense, people. If the Egyptians knew the difference in the, the distinction between Asian and themselves as African, and my brother just got to saying uh, in one of his quotes, the Arab Africans, I, I can't remember who he quoted that from, Arab Africans. That's two different things. He didn't say African Africans. If he, if he, if his if his point was right, he would say African Africans. But no, use your brains, people. Be smart. Be intelligent. Use your common sense. Arab African, and he also quoted Afro Asiatic. He also quoted Afro Arabs. He also quoted Africa Arabia. Talking about two two different people, y'all. Use your common sense. One plus one is two. Okay? Egypt, I'll take what Egypt says over any scholar, I don't care how prestigious he is, versus anybody. Okay? And common sense. Now, uh, I, I read the definition earlier, and I'm going to end it with uh, I'm gonna read this portion of it again. Arab is refers to the indigenous name of the people, perhaps literally inhabitants of the desert, Related to the Hebrew Abhara Desert, meaning homeless or wanderers. Why were they wandering? Because they were not indigenous to Africa, and they were not indigenous to Spain and all of North Africa. They were a nomadic people. The word Arabic, Arab means nomadic, wandering people, because they wandered from their indigenous homeland, which was Arabia. Named after themselves because that is their indigenous homeland. Okay? And a member of the Semitic people originally inhabiting Arabia, originally inhabiting Arabia, who spread, do you see that? S P R E A D, who spread throughout the Middle East, North Africa, and Spain, all the way to Spain. These people were called wanderers because the lands that they were wandering through, which includes Africa, was not their home. Uh, Brother Sal, thank you. I rest on that, and I just want to say that I appreciate uh, the opportunities that were afforded to me by you and DT for you. Bless you, dear brother, in the name of Black Jesus, East Yeshua, and to all of my opponents that uh, that I had an opportunity to to to, to uh, 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 debate with. Uh, and Brother Mikael, uh, you won the debate, brother, but I told the truth. Brother Mikael, you won the debate, brother. Congratulations, but I told the truth, dear brother. And uh, and I hope that that truth will absorb uh, in you and and your listeners and to the audience, as uh, I will continue to tr- strive to be a servant of truth and of clarity. And to my brother uh, uh, Raheem, uh, please, dear brother, uh, my remarks and my comments, my smart comments, were not uh, personal; they were for entertainment, uh, uh, purposes only. I love you, dear brother. Trust me on that. Uh, I would lay down my life for you if I had to, and uh, 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 and I appreciate you uh, stepping up to, to the plate uh, because I have learned, and hopefully you have learned, brother, 
and and those who have listened have will walk away with uh, uh, additional knowledge. And I would like to thank the callers who called in with their with their knowledge as well. This is how we learn. We learn from one another, and therefore we must love one another, which is the proof, the ultimate proof that we love God, obeying the two greatest commandments: love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love others as you love yourself. And I love each and every one of you. And thank you, DT for you and the DT for you family. You don't want to miss the best debate show via internet, Debate Talking Radio. Check out the schedule for Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time or at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. To check out the archives, go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk the number four and the letter U. You can listen via phone or via Skype by dialing that number 646-716-7320. Again, that's 646-716-7320. You can also go to iTunes in the podcast section. Just type in the search box debate talk the number four and letter U and you'll see the show pop up absolutely free you check out season 1 all the way up to the present season and enjoy the entire show so keep a lock on the Big Talkie Radio check us out